Katniss awoke while the artificial sun of the arena was still down. The only light provided came from the false moon and stars and what few embers remained from the career pack's fire. Taking stock of her situation she realized that her leg was no longer in agony. Not even the dulled pain from after she had placed the salve on the wound. After pulling back her makeshift bandage she gingerly prodded at the menacing scar that decorated her thigh. It was amazing how well the medicine sent by Haymitch had helped. She felt no pain and the swelling was long gone, returning the painless function of her leg. That was her first of many problems thankfully handled. After untying the ropes that kept her from slipping out of the tree while she slept, the District 12 tribute carefully descended to some lower branches in the tree to peek down on her competitors below. The four careers were in somewhat rough shape, though nowhere as rough as Katniss would have liked. The worse off seemed to be Glimmer and Clove, the two girls. Glimmer's injury from Naruto had been a very large cut on her arm that kept her from properly using the bow she had. Either the others hadn't attempted to use it themselves or she had refused to surrender the weapon despite it being nearly useless for herself now. That was good. She didn't need one of them trying to shoot her out of the tree, the canopy only provided so much resistance to projectiles. Clove was worse for wear as well. She now looked to be wearing a cropped shirt made of bandages. Whatever Naruto had done to her had also made her slow and stiff in movement. No doubt sponsors would provide her some sort of remedy soon enough though. Of the two boys, Marvel from District 1 was in perfect condition. No injuries at all. He was the one she was most concerned about at the moment, if he found it within him, she worried the larger stronger boy would climb the tree and being armed when she really wasn't she had no illusions on how that fight would most likely go. Thankfully, the careers seemed far too confident in their numbers. They either hadn't placed a sentry over the night or that sentry had fallen asleep right alongside the rest of the pack. It didn't change the fact that Katniss had no way out of her tree fort without waking them up, and the fact that they still outnumbered her four to one made any dreams of slipping away pipe dreams. Katniss bit her lip in frustrated thought as she climbed back up into the safer upper branches of her massive tree. Settling back in she ran a quick inventory on her supplies while trying her best to remain calm. She knew she was alone in this. She knew Naruto had led two of her attackers away and thankfully overheard that he had escaped, though not without injury if what they said could be believed. She couldn't expect any help at this point. She'd gotten help from both Naruto and Hamich, and in the end she was still trapped in a tree. She didn't want her fellow District 12 tribute to have gotten himself hurt for nothing. She had to find a way to make her escape. As he mind whirled in though a soft sound caught her attention. A whispered call of twelve. Katniss turned her head to see in a thinner, yet taller tree the young girl from District 11 had perched herself among the tallest branches, sending her a bright smile. Katniss couldn't help but smile back despite her situation. Seeing the girl felt like a relief somehow. Especially seeing as she was completely uninjured and healthy looking. Rue, if she recalled her name correctly, sent a slight wave which Katniss returned before pointing upward above Katniss' head. The older tribute looked up and couldn't help blinking in confusion for a little bit. All she saw was more branches of the massive tree. She turned back to look at Rue once more but the small girl pointed more vigorously up into the higher branches. Katniss turned to look again this time more carefully focusing. She heard it before she saw it. A slight buzzing. A hum of activity from insects. She had to adjust her position on the branches to get a look at what Rue was pointing out. When she finally saw it she was confused once again. It seemed like the girl was warning her about the hive of tracker jackers further up in the tree. She could appreciate that. A single tracker jacker was no real big deal. If you were allergic it would be a death sentence, but even the venom from a single one of their stings was enough to cause mild hallucinations. A hive could kill anyone. No matter their resistance to the venom. Glancing back to Rue the girl from District 11 was now motioning something else with her fingers. A scissor motion, like she was saying to cut the hive down. 
Katniss at first thought the girl was insane but then realized the idea she was trying to pass on. Cut the nest down and drop it on the career sleeping below. A brilliant idea. Thank you. Katniss whispered as loudly as she dared. Rue simply smiled back and waved as she slipped backward into the shadows of the tree. It didn't take long for Katniss to lose sight of her in the darkness. The girl sighed faintly before her face shifted to a determined look and she began securing all her supplies properly. Once she dropped the hive, she would need to move fast and avoid the tracker jackers herself as well as the careers. Okay, alright, here goes nothing. Katniss mumbled to herself as she climbed further up the limbs of the tree. As she neared the hive the humming from the nest grew louder and louder, not just from being closer to it. As she approached the swarm began to grow anxious, a few even venturing out to buzz around her. One even stung her on the neck as she settled the serrated edge of her knife against the base of the hive. Swatting the bug, she ignored the sting of pain shooting through her neck to saw at the hive. Her actions stirred the tracker jackers up into even more of a frenzy as they realized some sort of predator was coming for their home. A small handful more landed on her and began stinging her her causing Katniss to grunt and whimper in pain. Finally though the nest broke free and plummeted down toward the sleeping careers below. The moment it smacked into the ground and burst open the cloud of enraged tracker jackers raced to the first movement near them. Unfortunately for Glimmer she had been right beside the impact site of the hive and was nearly covered in a coat of the creatures as she began to scream in pain flaily uselessly to try and remove them. The others weren't spared from the swarm either, however they scattered before they could be truly be swarmed as their comrade was. The group fled, leaving behind Glimmer as she stumbled and fell, quickly swelling from the sheer amount of toxin in her body. The blonde girl choked out sobs as she struggled to even breathe. Most of the swarm had left her by now, handled as she was, and pursued the fleeing careers. As Katniss made her way out of the tree she carefully collected all she could from the group. Most notably, she finally had the bow and arrows that she had wanted. It felt good to have her weapon of choice in her hands, like she was safer and stronger than before just by possessing it. With her new items, she quickly made her way out of the small camp, stopping only briefly to glance at the dying girl from District 1. By now Glimmer was unrecognizable. The girl had swollen up so much she hardly looked human. Still the panicked gurgling and snorting as she struggled to breathe could be heard and Katniss felt she owed the girl at least the mercy of a quick death. It was human decency, at the least. She quickly crouched down and drew out her knife. She hovered it over the girl's throat. Her eyes were swollen shut and Katniss wondered if Glimmer even knew someone else was there. Was she even conscious? She seriously hoped not. For a moment she thought maybe she should say something. Anything. But she couldn't think of anything to say at all. She wasn't about to lie. She wasn't sorry. It was her or Glimmer, and she didn't care that much for Glimmer. It felt wrong to just end her though. Somehow. In the end she clenched her own eyes tight and imagined she was finishing a deer, back home. For a brief moment, she was just back in District 12, just over the fence, finishing off an excellent hunt. That moment lasted as long as it took for her to withdraw her knife once again. She cleaned the blood off and tried to keep herself from looking back at the corpse as she left. It wasn't hard. Her mind was already struggling with her next challenge. The toxins from the few stings she had received were beginning to cause her vision to swim and the world to spin around her. She stumbled and tripped through the wood struggling to remain upright as she went. This was not good. It was far worse than she had expected. Eventually it was too much and she clung to a tree and slid down against it. Around her the world blurred into a mix of colors and shapes. It was all she could do to not lean over and puke. The worry with that being that she might never be able to stop again if she started heaving now. Despite everything though she could hear the rushed snapping and cracking of trees as someone or something approached and, refusing to go down without some semblance of a fight, Katniss fumbled to draw an arrow back on her bow from a sitting position. 
As the object approaching broke the line of foliage she released the arrow almost at the same moment. Naruto had spent the night cleaning and doing his best to stitch up the wound on his arm. Had it just been the knife injury from Clove he probably would be able to largely ignore the pain and stitch it up neatly. Kato attacking it had torn the flesh into an even large misshapen injury. Once his adrenaline had worn off, he had been hardly able to touch it let alone try and stitch it up. It took far too long to handle the injury, but in the end he had a very basic set of stitches closing it as best as possible. He had bandaged it as well and prayed more than anything that it didn't get infected or something. He was rather attached to his arm after all. Okay so I am definitely not handling this well if I'm making trash jokes in my head. He groaned out loud, spitting the thin stick he had been biting down on during his little surgery operation. With that he had fallen into a fitful sleep. Between the pain, the paranoia caused by the thought of another tracking him back to his hideout, and whether he wanted to admit it or not, the worry for his fellow District 12 tribute, he wouldn't ever get the rest he really wanted. That became especially apparent when he snapped up at the sudden screams and shouts of fear and pain that echoed throughout the forest. He was at the edge of his hideout in a moment's notice and listening to get an idea of what was going on. It didn't take long to realize it was the careers and coming from the direct he had last seen them chasing Katniss in. Once more, against his own better judgment he set out with some supplies and his knives to find the other half of his district's sacrifices. He didn't engage the fleeing careers as they fled past, though it was tempting seeing as Clove obviously seemed to be struggling. He did notice that they seemed to be down a member and wondered if Katniss had been the one to eliminate another portion of the competition. As he continued on a cannon boomed and for a moment he feared the worst, feeling fear and sadness at the loss of someone he had to at least consider a friend. He pushed on though hoping that she wasn't the lost tribute and instead it was the missing career tribute, Glimmer. Coming to the career pack's former campsite he had never felt so relieved to see another person's corpse. He had never expected to ever feel relieved to see a corpse, but the fact that it was not Katniss laying on the ground was enough to fill him with a renewed vigor. He was no tracker but anyone could have followed the path that Katniss had cut through the woods. There was something obviously wrong with her and if Naruto had to guess it had something to do with the broken tracker jacker nest and puffy looking district one tribute. He continued looking, her path grew easier and easier to follow as she seemed to lose more and more of her faculties. He grimaced as the sound of the careers picked up behind him. They seemed to have regrouped and returned to their camp. The outrage at one of their own being killed was easy to hear in their voices as they shouted and called back and forth to one another. It wouldn't be long before they were on Katniss and there by his trail. What the hell is wrong with me? He growled out as he found his feet moving on their own. He knew where he was going. He had to get her moving and lead the careers away. Naruto didn't understand why, or rather he refused to understand why he was willing to do all this for her. She was supposed to be just another opponent. Another obstacle to him living and getting near immunity to actually speak his mind against the capital. He couldn't help himself though and he had to admit, a part of him wanted to make sure she survived this whole ordeal. The rest of him struggled to remind that portion that her surviving meant him dying. Shaking the thoughts from his mind he carried on toward Katniss's position. The shouts of the careers had died down by now. They were on the hunt and it wouldn't take too long for them to find him then Katniss. He had to pick up the pace. Deciding for speed over stealth he quickened his step, all but crashing through the brush into a small clearing. He very nearly died as an arrow narrowly passed his head and pinned a leaf to the trunk of a tree beside him. Whoa, Katniss, it's me. It's just me. He said holding his hands up. Naruto? The girl mumbled squinting her eyes in his direction. He quickly took in her appearance. She did not look good. Pale and sweaty, unfocused eyes and a slight sway to her movements, she looked on the verge of passing out or puking. Either that or both. On top of that her clothes were ripped and bloody with plenty of small singed places here and there. What are you doing here? She struggled to ask. Shit. 
same as yesterday I guess. Come on you have to get up. You have to move Katniss. Naruto said as he came over and lifted her easily to her feet even as she swayed and nearly went right back down again. Come on, stay up. You gotta stay up alright? Naruto encouraged but she was out of it. The girl went limp in his arms and a spike of panic shot through his chest. He took a calming breath when he noticed she had simply passed out and began trying to formulate a plan. He couldn't bring her with him. Trying to drag her back with him to the cave would make them easy pickings for the remaining careers. He couldn't take all three of them while injured and protecting Katniss. It was impossible. This will have to do. He said as he lugged the motionless body of his, friend to a narrow crevasse between the exposed roots of two larger trees. It wouldn't be comfortable but it would do. He slid her into the hole before pulling a log over the hole. It covered most of the opening and a handful of fallen limbs covered the rest. By the time he was finished he could hear the approaching careers and slipped into a hiding place of his own. One nowhere near as well hidden as he would like. Hey, there an arrow. The higher pitched voice of Clove called out. Katniss is around here then. She must be hallucinating, shooting at nothing. Cato said as he pulled the arrow free and scanned the area with his eyes. They widened as they locked with Naruto's. Before he could shout a warning Naruto burst from his spot and drove an attack toward Marvel. Sadly the boy had been too alert to be injured as his comrade from District 1 had been the day beforehand he brought his spear up easily to drive Naruto back. The tribute from 12 spun around the spear and wasted no time charging off into the woods once again. This fucking coward. Marvel bellowed after him. It's hit and run tactics. Try and go around and cut him off, Clove and I will push him toward you if we can. Kato commanded before taking off with Clove following close behind. Marvel cursed before sprinting out of the clearing as well to try and cut the boy off just as Kato had suggested. Naruto eventually lost his pursuers. It had taken most of the day but they had eventually given up and returned to their own base at the cornucopia. That still left him far from his normal base of operations. He was no longer even in the forest. Instead he was now in a section of tall grasses taller than he was. He had even managed to get somewhat lost inside and began fumbling for a way back out. That of course was what led to him running into Thresh, the District 11 male. He was the largest and most physically imposing of the tributes and Naruto was already on edge when they both stepped into the same break in the grasses. Neither moved. Both tightly clutched their weapons in hand and eyed one another up. The large kopesh blade in the hands of the District 1 male made Naruto nervous. As it was, he was clearly at the disadvantage here. Normally he would lash out hoping to offset his opponent but he could tell Thresh was ready for something like that. He was tensed and ready to fight. So, uncharacteristically of him, he took the second option. He slowly opened his hands and slid the knife back into its holster across his chest. He kept his hands up and made sure he presented himself as no threat to the other boy. 12. Thresh said simply while he continued to keep his guard up. 11. Naruto replied. Career pack? The boy asked, jerking his chin toward the clearly damaged arm. Yeah. Naruto answered back. Same every year. Thresh commented. Doesn't have to be. Naruto suggested. Yeah. Thresh asked. Could flip the tables on them. 12 and 11 versus 1 and 2. Naruto said. Thresh regarded him calculatingly. Despite his large size and obvious strength, he was by no means the stereotypical big strong idiot. Thresh was a dangerous man. I kinda like that. Thresh replied. Yeah? Naruto asked. Heh, yeah. Thresh said as he slipped his weapon back onto the strap at his waist. He then offered out his hand to shake. Naruto gingerly reached forward and shook hands. Slowly the handshake turned more rapid and both boys grinned at one another.
it would be refreshing to stick it to the inner districts for once. You, uh, know the way out of here? Naruto asked. Thresh snorted. Before turning and waving for Naruto to follow after him. Thresh had brought Naruto back to his campsite and the parry had shared a meal while discussing their plan. Eventually one of them, though as the conversation continued they couldn't recall which of them, had suggested that they make a true alliance between districts 12 and 11 and even try to bring in some of the other outer districts like 9 and 10. Both district 9 tributes are already gone. Naruto said. Oh, yeah. I kinda of just ignored the others on the list at night just hoping that Ru doesn't show up on there. Thresh replied. I do the same. I dunno why, but I always worry for Katniss showing up on there. Naruto said. Well, you two are Dash, Thresh began. No, no we aren't. Naruto interjected. I think the rest of the country disagrees. They are all pretty sure that you are. Thresh chuckled getting Naruto to seethe silently. Don't get worked up over it, if anything the only shitty part is you are both here. Only one gets to go home. Thresh said sadly. Yeah. Naruto was somber as well. The pair were silent for a bit, neither really wanting to keep talking about the subject. After all, they too would have to eventually fight one another to get to go home. What about Ten? I know the girl was killed but the boy? Thresh asked. We could offer it, but I don't know where the hell he's at. Naruto pointed out. I do. He's been holed up in a small group of trees past the grasses. Wait, you just been keeping track of the other tributes then? Naruto asked. Not all of them. Just those nearby. Mostly been hoping to see Rue so she and I can stay together. Haven't seen a hint of her at all since the bloodbath though. Thresh said as he finished up his food. Fair enough. So ready to head out? Naruto asked as he polished off the last of his own food and stood. Might as well, better to find him before nightfall, it's be dusk in a couple hours so if we keep a steady pace we can be there and back just before it's dark. Thresh explained. Sounds good. With that both boys started off. Naruto following behind the older and larger boy. It didn't take long before they settled into a companionable silence and Naruto could almost imagine they were just two friends out for a hike. It only served to spur a cycle of thoughts that wound back to him mentally cursing the capital for their cruelty. After all, he could make friends with Thresh, and perhaps any other tribute here in the games. In the end they would be trying to kill one another no matter their relationship. The hike wasn't long. The ground they covered was flat and easy enough to traverse. That and the careers were busy licking their wounds and formulating their own plots and schemes for once. It allowed Naruto and Thresh an easy time making their way to their fellow Outer District tribute. The District 10 male was easy enough to pick out among the small group of trees he had taken up as his own home. He had a bright yellow bag where most of his supplies were kept, one that stuck out like a sore thumb in the natural world. It was a bit of a shock that only Thresh had found him up to this point in Naruto's opinion. 10. Thresh called, causing the boy to whirl around in shock and scrambled for the large hooked knife he had for a weapon. Relax, we are here to talk, not to fight. Naruto said while raising his hands up in a non-threatening way. What's there to talk about? Just fuck off. The boy hollered, not lowering his guard in the slightest. At least hear us out first. If you don't agree then we can all go our separate ways and no harm no foul right? Thresh pointed out. The boy was silent for a while before slowly nodding. Naruto let out a small sigh in relief. Strength really did exist in numbers and he really liked the idea of the outer districts starting to finally band together against the people punching down on them all the time. We need to turn the tables on the careers. They have been training for the games their whole life and like always they formed an alliance before the games even started. Interested in having an alliance of our own? Naruto asked. 
The tribute stared back at Naruto and slowly lowered his weapon and let out a calming breath of his own. Slipping the knife into a makeshift holster on his thigh the boy nodded slowly and thoughtfully. You got an 11 for your ranking right, 12? He asked. Yeah. I can't say I remember what you got though. Naruto replied, not mentioning the fact he also didn't know the boy's name. At least Thresh seemed to be in the same boat. Enough of the district numbers. I'm Thresh, this is Naruto, I do know your name. Thresh said. It's Colt, so what exactly do you have planned anyway? He asked the other two boys. Well, I guess first we should find the rest of our group. Katniss should be back in the woods, as for Ru I have no idea. Naruto answered. We'll find her. Thresh responded. That's all well and good but my other half is already dead. Nobody to look for there. Colt said with a sour look on his face. Naruto had to wonder if every pair of tributes didn't have some sort of connection to one another. He could tell the boy was broken up about his fellow District 10 tributes passing and he wondered what he would feel when Katniss died. Angry? Sad? Maybe just relieved that he didn't have to kill her. Thresh caught the agitated expression growing on Naruto's face out of the corner of his eye. With Colt already seeming to be a sour person in general he felt it was best to get them underway and working on something rather than letting them wallow in the thought of what would come or had come. First thing is first. You know roughly where Katniss is so we'll go collect her. My old camp is about halfway to the edge of the forest and we can make it back there before it gets too dark. We'll camp there for the night and take turns sleeping in shifts in case the careers start hunting again. Thresh explained getting nods from the other boys, sounds like the best plan we can have at the moment. Colt agreed, and the three of them got underway with Colt in the middle of the group. Just as Thresh had expected they reached his campsite around dusk and began settling in for the night. They drew straws with the first watch going to Thresh, second to Colt and last to Naruto. Supper was a set of leftovers from earlier prey caught since the first day. Naruto and Thresh actually had enough to share and Colt ate better than he had since he finished off the last of his ration packs on the morning of the second day. Colt and Naruto were quick to bed down after they finished eating. That didn't mean it was easy to sleep. Trust was not something that was really a virtue in the Hunger Games. The need for rest overtook their distrust slowly though and both boys eventually fell asleep. When Naruto next awoke it was to the sound of a shout and he was on his feet in a flash with his hand on a knife as he prepared to defend the campsite only for his eyes to narrow as it was clear Colt had been aiming to kill Naruto in his sleep, only for Thresh to catch him in the act. You son of a bitch. The District 10 tribute spat at Thresh as he rushed Naruto. The fight was brief and easy. It was two on one and Naruto and Thresh were both ranked higher on the danger index than Colt for a reason. Naruto easily caught the boy's hands and, unable to break free and turn to face Thresh, Colt could only scream as Thresh reached around from behind him and slit his throat. As the body dropped, convulsing a few time before Colt died Naruto and Thresh exchanged a look. Naruto was grateful to the older boy. Truly, he wondered if he would have done the same briefly but shook off the thought as he offered his hand out to the larger boy. Thanks. Naruto said as they shook, both focused more on the corpse now laying at the center of the campsite. Yeah, just don't stab me in the back like he planned and we're even. Thresh huffed out. No problem. As a cannon sounded, both boys worked to drag Colt's body out of the camp and dumped it into a heap nearby. They had gradually become more numb to death and blood since the start of this ordeal, and hardly flinched as they did so. Despite that, Sleep evaded both of them for the rest of the night and by the time they were truly calmed down the sun was already beginning to climb into the sky. It's gonna suck being tired all day. Naruto complained lightly. True but we need to find the girls. Thresh replied. I can agree to that. Let's break camp and start out. The sooner we link up with them the better. Then we can plan what we'll do about the careers. Naruto said. 
Thresh simply nodded as both boys got to work breaking down the camp. It wouldn't take long and both would soon be on their move once more. Hunger Games Hosting Booth Capital Another excellent day for the games. Wouldn't you say so, Claudius? Caesar's voice boomed. Truly it was, so many twists and turns. Templesmith replied. Indeed. From Little Rue of District 11 lending Miss Everdeen a hand and that excellently handled plan with the the tracker jacker nest landing the fan favorite Katniss her first kill, to the drama of our new outer district alliance beginning and the betrayal of Colt from District 10. Caesar seemed positively ecstatic with the developments throughout the day. It was a very smart strategy, or would have been if Thresh hadn't woken up just in time. Colt could have really upset these games in a single stroke. Claudius commented. Right you are. Caesar returned. With that said I want to return our attention to what is quickly becoming one of my favorite aspects of these games. The interaction between Naruto and Katniss. Oh yes. Claudius practically giggled. Once again, throwing away his own safety for her. Naruto is nothing like his initial appearance suggests. Miss Everdeen is likely alive thanks to him. No doubt that the remaining tributes of District 1 and 2 would have surely found her if not for him. Flickerman commented. True, and even though she finally has her bow and could really cause some serious trouble for her opponents now, that tracker jacker toxin is some rough stuff. Claudius added. For sure. I mean we all saw what they did to poor Glimmer, but even just a small dose of that toxin is enough to cause extremely vivid hallucinations, alter a victim's sense of balance, and just make things terrible for them. No doubt poor Katniss will be feeling those effects for a full day if not longer. Caesar said. Oh no doubt about it Caesar. I'm simply amazed she handled it as well as she did. Just goes to show you how tough Miss Katniss really is. A regular Amazonian woman. Caesar said as he and Claudius devolved into obnoxious false laughter. Well, it appears that is the conclusion of day three with a total of two deaths today. Tune in again for more coverage on your annual Hunger Games, and remember viewership is mandatory, enjoyment is inevitable. Same time tomorrow folks. Caesar said signing off for the night. The pair of outer district boys easily hiked through the arena's landscape. They were some of the most athletic and fit of the tributes that year and so they easily held a conversation as they walked. They talked about just about everything they could think of to avoid thinking about their situation. Just as he had thought the day before, Naruto couldn't help but feel like Thresh and he might have been friends in a different life. Maybe if the districts weren't so rigidly separated or if they weren't here to kill one another. Sadly, they would never get the opportunity. That didn't mean they couldn't make the most of their situation. So you really don't have all that many forests, huh? Naruto commented. Well, at least nothing like what's here in the arena. My granny used to tell me stories about how it used to be. Before all the fences went up there used to be a lot of woods but most got cut down for more and more fields and orchards. Thresh explained. Pretty much all the woods in 12 are off limits but there's a lot of them to look at still. I have to say I'm jealous though. Naruto admitted. Jealous? That we cut down all our forests? Thresh asked. No, that you replaced them with fields and orchards. All we have is the mines. Naruto said with a distasteful look on his face. Yeah I guess your main thing is coal and stuff. Thresh nodded in realization. Yeah. Naruto simply said with a wistful expression on his face. Thresh glanced over at his ally and felt it was better not to continue down that conversational path. Even the other dirt poor districts like Eleven had heard about the rough conditions of Twelve. Is all that stuff about you and the girl from your district? Thresh asked. You mean about us being star-crossed lovers or whatever crap Effie and Caesar were spouting about? Naruto huffed getting a laugh from the older boy. Nah, I know the answer on that part just from your reaction. Thresh said as he continued to chuckle. 
Naruto frowned up at the boy causing Thresh to simply crack up into laughter again. The District 12 tribute rolled his eyes as he knew it was pointless to try and argue the point. Everyone seemed so sure he and Katniss were some sort of secret lovers. Man, whatever. Naruto groaned. No, but really. That stuff about you helping each other when you were starving. That was real or just to get more support? Thresh asked. Naruto was quiet for a little bit before slowly nodding. Yeah, that was true. Thresh nodded his head and let out a long sigh. He looked far more tired and suddenly Naruto felt very similar to his fellow combatant. The exhaustion and stress were no longer at the forefront of his mind but just under the surface it was still there. All-encompassing. You mentioned a granny, you got a family back in eleven? Naruto asked, trying to change the subject to happier memories. Yeah I do. What about you? Thresh asked before he recalled. Oh, shit sorry. You said they died. Thresh apologized. Yeah, I don't have anyone back home. The closest thing I have to a friend is Katniss and well, she's here. Naruto admitted. Thresh was silent for a moment frowning as he watched Naruto out of the corner of his eye. He doubted it would be appreciated but he did pity the younger boy. Time for a change of subject matter. So since you get so pissy about it when people say you and Katniss are a thing, are you, you know? Thresh asked. You know? What do you mean by that? Naruto asked. Oh, you know. Thresh said with a smirk. No, I don't know or I wouldn't ask. Naruto growled. You know, Thresh teased. Man, I'm about to say to hell with this alliance crap. Naruto grumbled, getting Thresh to laugh loudly. God you really are a loner. I'm trying to ask if you're gay. Thresh said. Wano. What the hell? Where did you get that idea? Naruto demanded. Thresh just cackled louder as he tried to keep talking. Really Naruto's reactions made things a lot more fun. It was a nice break from the reality of their situation. Well, you are so against it when people suggest you two be together, I thought maybe there was a different reason. Thresh managed to get out between chuckles. Naruto grit his teeth and grumbled about hunting some food before stalking off into the trees. Thresh chuckled again at the boy's reaction to being teased. I'll build a fire. He called after Naruto as the tribute from District 12 disappeared into the brush. Katniss gasped as she came around. She took in her surroundings and knew immediately she wasn't where she had passed out at. It took a little bit to really catch her bearings but once she did she realized just how well hidden she was in the small hiding place. Running through her foggy memory as best as she could, the last moments of her hallucinations came back to her. The way the forest had shook and rumbled around her as she had fled away from the place where she had killed Glimmer. She remembered that eventually it had become too much and she had to stop running, or attempting to run as she doubted the hobbling motion she had utilized while drugged up on Tracker Jacker Venom could really be called running. That was when someone had nearly been killed by her as they ran into the clearing after her. His face had seemed to emerge from the fog of reality and he had been trying to get her to safety. She remembered that, his worried expression as well but it wasn't enough. She knew she must have passed out. He helped me again. She mumbled as she realized he must have hidden her and let off the careers. Slowly she worked herself free of her hiding place and carefully inspected the clearing. It was empty except for a few small birds and the occasional squirrel. She emerged from the hole and had to stretch her body and try to shake out the sore muscles from the awkward position she had been in, better than being dead. She quietly remarked while kneading the muscles of her thighs as they were especially sore thanks to their position while she was out of it. Finishing her stretches, Katniss paused at a whistle that didn't quite fit in the usual sounds of the forest. She turned and couldn't help her surprise at seeing the younger girl, far up in the canopy waving back down at her. Rue? She asked as she felt herself naturally begin waving in response. You know my name? 
The girl asked with some surprise in her voice. Yeah, I guess. Katniss replied as she watched the younger tribute from District 11 descend from her perch in the tree with agility and ease that Katniss herself could only imagine. That was impressive. Katniss pointed out. Rue blinked for a moment before she realized what the older girl meant. She blushed faintly at the praise and smiled up at the girl from 12. Smaller kids like me are usually a big help in the orchards back home. So they teach us to climb pretty young before we get too big to get the smallest limbs near the top. Rue explained. Katniss nodded. It made sense. At least from a practical standpoint. She supposed she should be happy that they didn't have kids going down in the mines in District 12 to get into the smaller tunnels, what are you doing here? Katniss asked as she settled onto a large rock nearby. Rue sat nearby but on the grass. I was waiting for you to wake up. I saw the other District 12 tribute put you in there and then lead the career pack away. Rue explained. Did he get away? Katniss asked with a bit of worry. I guess. I lost track of them and came back here to wait for you to wake up. There's only been two cannons. One for that career girl and then the District 10 guy. Rue explained. Katniss sighed in mild relief at that. She knew he would have to die for her to go home, but the idea of him dying to save her was a very displeasing one. Why were you waiting for me to wake up anyway? You could have killed me while I was out and taken all my things. Katniss asked. Rue shuffled about for a minute. It's stupid but I really don't want to hurt anyone while in the games. She admitted. Katniss frowned and her eyes softened considerably as she looked over at the girl. I don't think that's stupid Rue. The truth is I don't want to hurt anyone either. We have to do what we have to do to survive though. That's why you waited for me right? So we could, make an alliance? She asked the younger girl. She reminded her a lot of Prim. Yeah. Rue nodded. That's good. We already, make a good team. Katniss said. The tracker jacker nest. Rue said with a melancholy expression. Hey, you saved me with that plan you know. Katniss said. I just wanted to make them run away so that you could escape. I saw her body, it was so bad. Rue but her lip to keep tears from welling at the memory. No tears. You didn't even drop the nest on them, I did. You just pointed it out to me. You need to listen to me though, alright? Katniss said getting the girl's attention. The District 11 girl nodded and paid attention though she was still upset by the situation. You cannot get out of here without hurting someone. You have to be ready to hurt others to protect yourself, okay? Katniss tried. It's been done before. Rue argued. The girl was right. There had been a small number of victors who had never directly taken a life. The thing was they had replied primarily on luck to survive. Luck wasn't something Katniss had any faith in. Rue, that was then. This is now. Different competitors. Different arena. You can't just hope to win, you have to be ready to fight for it. Katniss tried to impress upon the girl. She could tell Rue was still conflicted at the concept. That was fine. She was a twelve-year-old child. It wasn't right that she was here facing off against people who were practically adults. It was probably best to shift gears and take their minds off of the game. They didn't need to be hung up on what they had to do here in the arena to survive. They just needed to survive. From what Katniss understood there would be more than enough time to think about what it's and everything if one of them managed to win and survive in the end. You know, I bet you are pretty hungry. Let's see if we can't find a good place to camp and make something to eat. Katniss suggested. Alright, I know a place that's hard to get to without using the trees to get there. All the others will have trouble reaching it. Rue said. Sounds perfect. Katniss agreed. The pair headed off, first along the ground then carefully picking their path along the branches of the thick forest. This is where I left her. 
Naruto said as he knelt down in front of the hollow he had hidden Katniss in. She must have slept off the stings from those bugs you mentioned and took off into the forest. Unless you are a tracker we aren't about to catch up to her. Thresh said as he scanned the tree line. Damn it. Naruto sagged with disappointment. It's starting to get dark again too. Thresh helpfully pointed out. Naruto glanced up to the sky and frowned. The other tribute was right. They had maybe another two hours of sunlight. There's no way that we can find her before sunset. Naruto admitted. Yeah. Imagine how I feel about Ru. I mean she uses the trees to move around. I at least know I'm in the right section of the arena. But besides that how the hell am I supposed to find her? Thresh complained. Naruto stood up and shrugged. He didn't have any idea how to really help his friend. Katniss was going to be a lot easier to find than Ru would be as far as Naruto could tell. At the moment both were out of reach though so it was best they conserve their energy. Let's make camp for the night. We need to eat and rest, we've been on the move for hours. Naruto said. Yeah, good point. The older boy nodded. You make the fire this time, I'll rustle something up to eat. Alright, but be quick, we don't want the fire burning for long. Careers will be looking for the signs. Naruto said getting nothing but a nod in response. It didn't take long before the two had a decent meal. Decent for the arena anyway. They both laid back and stared up at the sky once the fire had been put out and buried. They moved a short distance away from where they had made the fire just to be safe and bedded down for the night. Neither was quite ready to sleep yet even after they had agreed on the night watch rotation. So you seem pretty concerned about Ru. Naruto idly commented as they relaxed. Hmm, yeah I guess I am. Thresh replied. You know her from before the games? Naruto asked. Thresh shook his head. First time I spoke to her was when we were pulled into the Capitol building back home in Eleven. She was terrified. Shivering, I mean she's just a kid. I think she's about the same age as Katniss' little sister. Naruto said. The one she volunteered for? Thresh asked. Yeah. Naruto replied. Would have been weird if she didn't. You and me both partnered with little girls for tributes. The older boy pointed out. Yeah, don't envy you man. Naruto said. I wouldn't either. Then again, going up against the girl I have the hots for would suck too. Thresh said laughing as Naruto chuckled a rock at him. I'm so tired of that nonsense. Not like it matters if I actually like her or not though. He said solemnly. Thresh didn't say anything both just rested in silence as they thought over the games. I'm going to die here. Thresh suddenly said. Naruto blinked before looking over at him. What? Naruto asked. I said, I'm going to die here. I already know I will. I'm gonna make sure that if District 11 wins this thing, it's Ru that goes home. Thresh explained. Naruto stared at the other boy for a while before laying back down and trying to get a grasp on his own thoughts. It wasn't a pleasant thing. Thinking about letting yourself die so another could live. He, cared for Katniss. That much was true but he didn't really think that he loved her. Still if he thought about it, did he have anyone he loved? Katniss did. She had family, family that replied on her to provide for them. What about your family? Naruto asked Thresh. The boy was silent for a time before shrugging. I want to think they would understand. They might be upset but we outer districts pretty much expect to go into the games prepared to die anyway. I see. Naruto said quietly. The two fell back into silence again for a time. The somber atmosphere hung over them as both thought of not only their own possible deaths but the deaths of those they had come to know. Even one another. Your arm is still bothering you. I noticed you have been grabbing at it a lot. Thresh commented. It's not too bad. 
Naruto shrugged. You are surprisingly bad at lying. Thresh chuckled. Besides, those bandages are filthy. Just gonna make it worse for you in the long run you know. I have more supplies at my hideout. Naruto admitted. Thresh nodded. We need to split up tomorrow morning anyway. You should head to your cave and patch yourself back up again before setting out for Katniss. Hold up, we just made this alliance and you want to split it up already? Naruto asked. Not the alliance. Just us. We need to find the girls. This way if one of us finds at least one of them we can bring them back with us to a meeting point or something. Thresh explained. Huh, okay that's a good idea. Naruto agrees. So for a meeting point, the hollow tree I hid Katniss in earlier? That works. We'll meet up there in a couple days after splitting up. Thresh said. All right. Promise that if we find each other's partner we don't hurt them or harm them in any way. Naruto said seriously. Promise? We could just break that easily. Thresh replied. Maybe but I'll believe in you. You saved my life so I'll trust in you for now. He answered back. Thresh just stared at the other boy for a while before nodding slowly. They shook again, just as they had before. The capital. That concludes another day of the games, it seemed to be a bit more of a peaceful one this time around. Claudius announced. Perhaps, but just because we didn't see any of our tributes pass on today does not mean that nothing happened today. Caesar pointed out. Right, you are Caesar. Claudius agreed. For instance we had our young District 11 tribute Rue make a very bold move in approaching Katniss. Caesar stated. True, but it paid off. Claudius commented. That it did. It seems that both our male and female tributes from District 11 and 12 are like-minded individuals. Caesar said. Speaking of our new blossoming alliance on the field, did you catch the conversation between Naruto and Thresh tonight Caesar? Claudius asked. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world, Claudius. Hearing Thresh's vow was moving. No doubt people are loving the heroic duo of Naruto and Thresh. Caesar said. These boys are something else. Claudius added. The girls from their districts are just as impressive. Really this is the most enthralled in a Hunger Games I have been since I was a boy. Caesar commented. The pair continued commenting and speaking for a few hours more before they themselves retired for a very short chance to recharge before returning to view the start of the next day. The next morning, Thresh and Naruto bid their farewells to one another and headed off. Naruto planned on taking the advice that Thresh had given him the night before and headed in the direction of his hideout in the hopes no one had discovered his stash inside. The older tribute had been right. Naruto's arm was beginning to severely bother him. It was difficult to make a fist or tightly grip anything as it was and he could tell it was swelling noticeably by now. Thresh had also been right about the bandages. They were starting to even smell a bit and he couldn't say he was pleased with the intense itchy feeling emanating from beneath the gauze. He forced himself not to pick at the bandages yet, fearing he might make things worse before he had access to new wraps. It was surprising how hard it was to stop himself. To try and keep his mind off of it he did his best to think on anything else. His mind wandered from thought to thought. Eventually he found himself thinking of Katniss again. Not about her specifically. That train of thought, he ended quickly. It was more about what he and Thresh had discussed the night before. Was he willing to let himself die to ensure Katniss went home alive? He agonized about that thought but his mind always came back to one fact. There was no one waiting for him back in District 12. The sound of a struggle nearby made him realize he was drifting in thought too much. A dangerous thing to do in the arena. He fucked into some thick brush and crept forward to see what exactly was happening. It wasn't hard to figure out. A male and a female, he couldn't recall their districts honestly, were fighting. It was brutal but neither was very good at it. 
Naruto could tell both were completely zoned in on one another. Not that it mattered much, the fight would probably take all day at the rate they were going. He sat and watched them for a time, both struggling to survive. That was when he saw exactly what it was they were fighting over. It seemed like this was the girls' campsite and the pack was surprisingly laden down with supplies. Neither were concerned with it right now though. They might be fighting over the backpack but both had forgotten it in their attempt to kill one another. The choice was surprisingly easy at this point. Without alerting them Naruto retrieved the pack and slipped away once again, heading off toward his hideout. Once he was a ways away he heard the cannon marking one of the two had fallen, not that he had any real way of knowing which had come out on top. Katniss. Rue said, catching the older girl's attention. Hmm. What's up? Katniss asked. I've been thinking about what we talked about yesterday. Rue began. Katniss stayed silent to let her get what she had to say off of her chest. You were right. I know I can't get home without having to hurt people. I know a way to hurt the careers too, without actually hurting them even. Rue explained. Katniss was surprised by that but she was all ears for whatever the younger girl had planned. If it harmed the careers it helped them, and if it was something Rue had in mind, Katniss had a feeling it was something that wasn't too directly dangerous to the two of them. What did you have in mind? She asked. They have all the supplies from the cornucopia piled up together in a clearing by the river. The District 3 boy has been helping them with something around it too. I don't really know what they're doing but it has something to do with the bombs from the starting area. Rue explained. Katniss knew that Rue was incredibly good at hiding and observing others, but this really took the cake. That's great Rue, really. So our plan is to destroy the supplies then, huh? Katniss hummed in thought. Level the playing field. Rue said with a small smile. Huh, yeah level the playing field. Katniss said as she began strategizing exactly how they were going to manage this. Eventually the girls settled on a relatively simple, but hopefully effective strategy. They would circle halfway around the career camp and set up a pair of campfires. One on the far side away from Katniss and Rue's own camp, and another halfway between their camp and the first fake. It would not only make the careers leave their camp but force them to split up as well. Are you sure you're up for it, Rue? Katniss asked. She couldn't lie. She was a bit worried. She knew the younger girl was fast and capable of moving through the treetops unlike everyone else, but a whole list of things could go wrong and Rue didn't stand much of a chance against the career pack alone. I can do this. She said with a determined expression on her face. Katniss smiled at the girl. She reminded her so much of Prim it made her heart ache. Okay, but you have to be careful. We're splitting them up, but that means we'll be split up too. Katniss reminded her. I know, you have to be careful too. They might not all take the bait. Rue pointed out. Katniss nodded. Like she was thinking before, the plan could go bad in any number of ways and they could both wind up dead. It was a good plan though and they were committed to it. It was about time someone leveled the playing field with the career tributes. All right, I'll see you soon. Katniss said as the pair of them split up and went toward their different position for the plan. It didn't take her long to get into position. She was just beyond the edge of the trees to remain out of sight of the careers, while watching them as they mulled about in the clearing. The camp and supplies were separated by a small stretch of open ground, however Katniss could tell that the area was mined, just like Rue had reported. The District 3 boy, had earned his place among the career pack with that ploy, but he still wasn't treated as an equal. She watched as they mocked and bullied the younger kid relentlessly. Cato didn't join in with Marvel and Clove, but he clearly had no problem pushing the kid around either as he simply manhandled him out of his way rather than speak to him. Katniss grinned as she saw first one plume of smoke begin to waft above the far tree lean, somewhere out in the first. The careers didn't immediately notice it, but as the second joined the first Marvel pointed them out with a shout. 
the group hastily divided themselves into three groups. The boy from District 3 was left behind to monitor the camp while Cato and Clove remained together and headed for the first campfire. Marvel headed for the second alone. Katniss began to ready herself as she saw her chance but stopped as suddenly the girl she had run into on the first day, Fox Face, the tribute from District 5, sprinted into the clearing, carefully dodging between the mines that filled the clearing and snatching a bag of food from the pile. As she sprinted away the boy from District 3 saw her and gave chase to the best of his abilities, but she had an obvious head start and much longer legs. Seeing her chance, Katniss took aim and plucked an arrow at a bag of apples. The bag tore slightly but not enough, so she loosed a second arrow and once again, it wasn't quite enough. The girl bit her lip but slowly slipped into the clearing and closed the distance to the pile of supplies. She didn't have too many arrows left and she had to make this final shot count. With a calming breath and a silent prayer she let the third arrow fly, managing to hit her target spot on and causing the apples to bounce down the pile of supplies and into the minefield. There was a brief pause once the apples settled that made Katniss worry that perhaps it wasn't enough, but one rolled directly into the side of the nearest mine causing its detonation. The explosion was far larger than anticipated. It not only obliterated the supplies as she had hoped, it turned the entire clearing into a crate and flung her bodily back into the forest nearby. A high-pitched ringing drowned out all sound and she found that she couldn't keep the little bit of food she'd eaten earlier in the day down. Pushing her way to her knees, she threw up, as quietly as she could. Or as quietly as she hoped. She could already tell she was deaf in one of her ears and the other was muffled terribly as the ringing sound continued on. Her balance was shot as well and she had to take a moment to carefully regain control of her body and mind to try and stop the world spinning around her. Slowly, so painfully slowly, she managed to regain her motor functions and crawl to the edge of the tree line to inspect her work. The careers, and their pawn, had all returned following the explosion. They were clearly furious which brought a smile to Katniss's face until she watched Cato turn to the boy beside him. She couldn't clearly make out the older boy's words, but from his body language and movement of his lips it looked like he called the younger boy useless before brutally gripping his head and gruffly snapping it around to an impossible angle. Katniss took that as her sign to head to the rendezvous. As she moved through the trees headed back to camp she gradually regained complete control of herself. One of her ears was still muffled, but the ringing in her good ear had finally stopped and she was happy to hear the sound of the forest around her. At first, when the sound of birds and insects in the trees changed to the panicked screams of Rue as she yelled for help, Katniss panicked. She raced as quickly as she could toward the sound of Rue's voice, a task made all the more difficult with her impaired hearing. Finally though she found her. Caught in a trap, like some kind of animal. Katniss didn't waste any time in cutting away the ropes and net, only stopping when the girl screamed and pointed behind her. When Katniss turned she flinched as a spear flew past her. Her eyes took in the boy ahead of her. He wasn't one of the careers, just one of the other contenders. His eyes were wide with fear as he realized he had missed his throw and was now defenseless. It wouldn't have mattered if he still had the spear though. Katniss drew an arrow and released it in a single motion catching the boy right in the throat, dropping him immediately. She could only blink in shock at what she had just done. It had been entirely by instinct, completely controlled by adrenaline. Still she had just killed someone easily. Her mind warred between cheers of victory and heartbreaking sobs for taking another person's life. At least until she was pulled back into the moment by the choked cry of her ally slowly Katniss turned and immediately paled at the sight of Rue bleeding from the spear that had impaled her in the chest. No, no, no. Katniss said as she rushed to the girl's side. It was already too late though. While it might not have been meant for her, the spear throw had been perfectly placed to strike Rue through the heart and lung. She simply stared up at Katniss with frightened teary eyes before they began to go dark and glassy. Katniss held her there, staring into her eyes for what felt like second but could have as easily been hours. It felt wrong to see that look in the eyes of a girl the same age as Prim. 
It was wrong. She wasn't sure when she started crying, but tears were soon running freely down her cheeks and Katniss sobbed. Body shaking, chest aching wails that would have normally had the careers come running if they weren't so busy with their destroyed camp. Katniss didn't care if they had come. She grieved for the girl she barely knew but had come to care for. Maybe it was just because of the similarities to Prim, or the fact she was so young, but the death of Rue broke her heart more than anything else in the games likely would. It wasn't fair. From their places across the nation, the citizens of Paynham watched on as Katniss slowly recollected herself and then tended to Rue's body. She cleaned her as best she could and draped her in flowers and anything else that she could to make her look somewhat at peace. Already entranced by the rebellious and kind tributes from districts 11 and 12, the people were heartbroken to see the youngest among them be killed. That heartbreak quickly turned to white-hot rage though as the situation proved too much for the people of the districts. Within hours District 11 was under lockdown, but fires burned in the street and crowds of rioters fought peacekeepers with everything they had in blood mosh pits in front of the district's capitol building itself. The rioting quickly spread as well. While smaller in scale, District 12 fell to similar actions and before long Districts 9 and 10 joined them. Their tributes were dead and gone already but that only fueled their rage against the capital even more. In the capital itself the game makers and other leadership figures tried their best to run damage control but the riots only seemed to grow worse and President Snow's disfavor had begun to mount against Seneca. The Capital in their broadcast center both Claudius and Caesar struggled to keep things focused on the games and not even imply what was going on in the various districts. As it was, the riots were contained, to an extent, and none of the districts knew anything about it except for the very early reports of riots from Eleven. The hope was that by moving along like everything was normal and cutting the rioters off from being hurt it would all die away quickly. What an exciting day! Caesar tried to oversell his excitement. Right, er, right you are Caesar. Claudius joined in. I have to say I can't quite recall an explosion of such a scale ever being seen in the games before. It was magnificent. Not to mention the drama, how, uh, exciting. Caesar tried. Right you are Caesar. Cluadius repeated, causing Caesar to very briefly glare at his co-host before forcing his slightly too wide of a smile back into place. We sadly have seen some fan favorites pass on today, and seen a total of four deaths throughout the arena. Caesar continued recapping. You know what I'm really interested in seeing Claudius, is the consequences of Rue's death on the District 11 and 12 alliance. Um, we'll have to see. Cluadius asked as his attention was still on one of the monitors showing the riots in District 11. Yes, we will. Remember to tune in tomorrow morning, all stations, all day, all for you. Caesar said before making a knife to the neck motion to the camera crew so that they cut the feed. You are to blame for this, disquiet. Snow flatly said. He had no menace in his tone which only seemed to make it worse for Seneca as he swallowed his saliva. I don't know what you want me to do. Tributes die in the games. How am I supposed to run the games to keep people compliant if they are rioting because of the basic premise of the whole thing? Seneca asked, if they were rioting just because of one little girl dying they would have been rioting continuously for the last 74 years. You are letting the outer district tributes to turn the games into a show about how much they have personally suffered under the capital. You are letting them continue to openly defy the capital with their words and deeds. The people will follow by example because of it. Snow tried to explain. So, I'll kill them. I'll have the dash, Seneca began only to be silenced with a raised hand. You will do no such thing. Killing them now would just worsen the situation. If it is obvious your game makers killed them it looks as though we were afraid of them which in turn makes us look weak. Snow corrected. Then what am I supposed to do? Seneca asked. Think outside the box. I put you into your position because of your ability to do that. Stop disappointing me. Snow said as he began to walk away. 
If you do not begin to perform and produce results, you will be pruned from my regime, Crane. He said as he left the room. Seneca simply stared after him while a thousand panicked ideas and half-baked solutions buzzed in his head. None worked out though. He needed to think of something fast. While Naruto, Katniss, and the other remaining tributes fought on to survive in the arena, things outside had grown more violent and chaotic by the day. The riot in District 1 was subdued, but only through force. The destruction of grain silos and buildings as well as dozens of deaths from the peacekeeper crackdown had made the district appear as if it was a war zone. Outside of District 11, other outer districts or those that were the most oppressed also rose up in protest. They too faced peacekeeper retaliation, though none as badly as District 11 had. While things there remained tense, they were slowly being returned to normalcy. More out of fear of further reprisal than anything else. In Districts 8 and 12 things were only growing more intense though. District 12 had always had a bit of an independent feeling to it. They got the least food, least power, and least support from the capital out of all the districts. To survive in a place like the District 12 seem, you had to bend rules and pull off some creative stunts. Gail Hawthorne and many others among the young adult generations of the district had found themselves locked down in holding cells following a brief riot. From there he and the others were still forced to watch the games, only now in the discomfort of a detention center. District 8 was different though. It was one of if not the most densely populated district in the country. Extremely urbanized subdivisions made up the district's territory and nearly its entire population toiled in the massive factories for textiles, producing clothing and fabric for the rest of the country as a whole. Those that didn't work on the factory floor either worked to maintain the machinery that the district used or fit into the extremely small group of people that filled the same role as the merchant side of District 12. The food rations in 8 were thereby more strictly enforced than anywhere else and shortages were common. Hunger was also common and while death by starvation was more likely in the remote District 12, that was only due to population statistics as District 8's numbers dwarfed those of District 12. At the very least those in 12 could rely on poachers when things grew too lean. In 8 there were no forests to hunt. The closest they had were rat catchers whose title implied exactly what source the protein they provided came from. With the threat of 12 and 8 outright rioting in greater and more organized shows of force, Seneca Crane was beginning to truly feel the weight of his position. As well as the weight of President Snow's disappointment. The game master was facing an impossible situation. The president expected him to fix things with the games but even someone born and raised entirely in the capital like Crane had been could see that the system was broken. Revolt was inevitable. How could he possibly use a game designed to kill the children of the districts to keep the districts happy, or at the very least docile? It was entirely impossible. That is until Hamish Abernathy approached him. Hamish was an opportunist. It was ingrained into the people of District 12 to think outside the box, but people like Hamish took that further. He could easily see the situation that the game master had found himself in. That meant he had an opportunity. It took time to corner the game master for a conversation, but when he finally did the man listened. He had no other options really. You want to get the people out there to calm down? Show that they have been heard and give them just a little sliver of hope. Give them a show. Those two kids care about one another and between Flickerman and Effie the whole country thinks that they are in love with each other. Take their mind off of the death of that girl from Eleven and put it on something positive for a while. Hey Mitch whispered into Seneca's ear as they say at a table and picked at the lavish meal before them. The game master chewed his food silently while he contemplated the mentor's words. Despite his drunkenness and unkempt nature Hamish was one of the most popular victors still alive. He had fought in the second quarter quell and managed to come out on top of a much larger Hunger Games than was normal. Between his time in the games, his time as a victor, and his time as a mentor, Hamish had more experience dealing with all of this than Seneca did. Much more actually. Alright, what did you have in mind? Crane asked. 
Hamish smirked a bit as he leaned in again to give him his idea. Truth be told he couldn't care less if Crane hung for it or if the plan worked at all. It was for Naruto and Katniss. The slimmest chance that both might come home and get the chance to live the lives they deserved. Back in the arena, Naruto had set out to look for his fellow District 12 comrade. A night had passed since the explosion that had claimed the career pack's campsite. A night that saw Ru appear in the sky. Naruto had given the same sign his district had to Katniss when she volunteered. Unknowingly mirroring his partner from home. He pities the girl, and he pities Thresh knowing the boy wanted nothing more than to see Rue go home alive. That being said worry had begun to grow in his chest. Did that mean his deal with Thresh would be gone now? What reason would the District 11 tribute have for continuing to work with Naruto and Katniss? Assuming of course Naruto could reunite with either of them soon. In fact, if he was in Thresh's position he doubted that he would even bother returning to the rendezvous point they had agreed upon. He would rather avoid a chance of being betrayed or possibly having to betray someone he got along with so easily. That didn't matter at the moment though. Right now his mind needed to be focused. Not just on finding Katniss either. His arm had been poorly stitched and had reopened when he had been trying to bandage it the night before. It was thankfully not infected, but the pain and blood loss was not helping him in the slightest. He fought exhaustion and nausea continuously and he was effectively down to one arm at the moment. Still he knew that he needed to find Katniss and so set out to do just that. He started by edging past the center of the arena. He couldn't say for certain but out of all of the remaining competitors, Katniss was the only one he could see somehow destroying the career pack supplies. Who else could really pose that sort of threat to the likes of Kato and his remaining cronies? From there Naruto slowly began working his way further and further into the woods. Even with the bad luck Katniss had suffered so far in the thick woods, it was the environment she knew best so he was sure she would stick to it. After several hours though, the best he had managed to do was find a few of her snares to catch small game. As the sun passed the midpoint in the sky he began slowing down and preparing to turn back for his cave. More than disappointed he was beginning to really struggle with his injury. The poor attempt at stitches he had performed threatened to make the wound even worse than it had been and traveling over rugged uneven terrain made sure he had no way to stop jostling the wounded limb. Since Rue had been killed Katniss had become almost numb. Her tears had stopped but she worked almost on autopilot as she set up snares and found a place to rest. That was extremely dangerous on her part as she wasn't paying close enough attention to her surroundings in the event that the careers or another tribute might get the drop on her. Thankfully the person she encountered wasn't one of the tributes itching for a shot at her head. In fact it was her own fellow tribute from Twelve. Clearly he hadn't noticed her hidden far up in the branches of the thick trees as he trudged past her, or rather underneath her. Naruto looked worse for wear with one of his arms in tattered and bloody bandages held in a makeshift sling to try and keep it from moving too much. He stumbled a bit but was more sure-footed while injured than some of their opponents had been while perfectly healthy. Katniss was incredibly relieved to see him with her own two eyes. He had already helped her out twice now and it looked like she could return the favor and she wanted to until she reminded herself that only one of them would be leaving the arena alive. After holding Rue as she died, Katniss didn't want that again. Not with someone that she actually knew from back home. She didn't think she could bear it. So she watched silently as he passed by. It looked like he was searching for something, and when he found one of her snares she knew he was looking for her. It made it even harder to watch as he passed by and the sun began to dip lower into the sky with the late afternoon. Settled in for another night in the woods, Katniss jolted slightly as a voice came to life over the sound of the forest. Attention tributes, attention. The game maker's voice said clearly. The regulations requiring a single victor have been, suspended. From now on two victors may be crowned if both originate from the same district. This will be the only announcement. Katniss blinked in shock before scrambling to undo the rope that kept her secured to the tree. She needed to catch up to Naruto. There was a chance for both of them now and they wouldn't have to fight at all. 
She quickly collected her handful of items and began moving through the forest after Naruto. She wasn't quiet or all that careful, more worried about catching up to him before he moves too far away than anything else. She was a far better tracker than he was as well, and while Naruto could recognize her snares, Katniss could pick out his path from even the sight of bent grasses and broken twigs. Soon enough she was hot on his trail and certain she was gaining on him until suddenly she felt a hand snap out and wrap tightly around her mouth. Her eyes went wide as thoughts surrounding the large career tribute Kato running her through with his sword now of all times ran through her mind. Instead the hand let go and she slowly turned to see who had released her. Naruto stood before her. He had pressed into a thick bit of underbrush and waited for whoever had been trailing after him to step past him. Both stood and stared for a moment before exhausted smiles spread onto their faces and they tightly embraced. At least until Naruto hissed in pain from the girl brushing against his arm. She jumped back apologizing while he waved off her worried tone. Don't worry about it. It hurts but it isn't killing me. I'm just glad to see that you are doing better than last time that I saw you. Naruto said as he let himself slowly drop down to sit on an old fallen tree, Katniss smiled softly at that reminder. One of the times he had come through for her even before the announcement that they could both be allowed to survive. It made the numbness she'd felt since Rue was killed begin to dampen and a warmth return. Just a little. We shouldn't stay here. I was pretty loud trying to find you. Katniss said as she remembered their situation. Right. I was pretty surprised, never thought I would hear you tramping through the woods like that. You are more controlled normally. Naruto agreed. Yeah, well I was in a hurry to catch up to you. She replied with that small soft grin beginning to return yet again. Naruto couldn't help but share one of his own with the girl. Stiffly he stood back up and waved for her to follow him before taking a much more careful and roundabout route back toward his cave. It was better this way to keep others from simply following after them or from running into those that might have stumbled onto their trail that they had made while looking for one another. The fact that it was a smoother path than what he had taken previously so that his arm was jostled less as he moved was neither here nor there. Soon they came to his hideaway. One that impressed Katniss well enough. Naruto had to show her the path through his defenses which made it clear how difficult actually attacking his cave would be for others. On top of that the cave was comfortable and well stocked with a decent amount of supplies. Naruto didn't hesitate tossing a bit of food her way. Ration bars, you still have some? She asked in shock that Naruto had so much food left. Mostly from stealing some supplies from others either while they were distracted or. Naruto trailed off, they both knew what he was going to say and there wasn't a need to voice it out loud anymore. Katniss quietly tucked into the food he had given her. She settled into a semi-comfortable place beside the makeshift bed Naruto had made. For a cave made up of cold damp stone it was actually a pretty cozy place to rest or even sleep, much better than up in the trees she had gotten used to during the nearly week-long games. When she had finished she noticed that Naruto was sitting nearby just watching her. Her cheeks heated up slightly at that. Not because he was looking at her, she wasn't so bashful at that, but because she had practically shoveled the food he had given her into her mouth like a pig without thinking about it. Naruto seemed to notice her blush though as he chuckled at her expense, making Katniss pout faintly as she flicked a small stone in his direction. The boy twisted his head out of the way but in doing so brushed his arm against the rocks of the wall causing him to jerk away from it and hiss in pain. Oh god, are you alright? Katniss asked worriedly, mentally kicking herself for somehow forgetting he was injured. Yeah, fine really. Naruto replied trying to turn so that he hid his hurt arm behind his body. Let me see it. I might be able to help. Katniss said. I handled it. It's as good as it's going to get as long as we're here in the arena. Naruto argued, then it shouldn't matter if I look at it right? Katniss asked with a bit of steel in her tone that surprised Naruto a bit. Really, it is fine Katniss. Let me worry about it. Naruto tried to argue. 
Of all the things to act prideful over it's a hole in your arm? Really? Give it to me. Katniss practically commanded. Naruto stared over at her for a moment. With a small grumble he slowly did as she wished. Katniss removed the makeshift sling and gently set the wounded arm into her lap before carefully unraveling the old bandages that he had over it. The moment she finished she gasped at the injury. The poor attempt at stitches that Naruto had done himself had torn at some point and the wound was a bloody mess of torn flesh and fishing line. I have to stitch this properly. You managed to mess it up pretty bad. She said seriously as she snatched up the makeshift needle and thread Naruto had made from a fish hook and fishing line. Naruto really had no choice in the matter. Katniss carefully cut the old line free before threading the needle and starting on repairing the damage done to her partner's arm. Naruto bit his lip and grunted softly as the girl worked on him. It was painful, though not nearly as bad as the initial injury had been. He was not having a pleasant time though. In an attempt to distract him from the pain, and to a certain extent just calm her own nerves at sewing up human flesh, Katniss began to talk. She talked about all manner of things. Little unnecessary things. To the point she was just babbling incoherently about something from their time at school back in District 12. Katniss. Naruto finally said between deep breaths to keep himself steady from the feeling of her digging into his arm with a needle and thread. Huh? She asked as she pushed the sharp point of the needle through his skin once again causing him to choke back a gasp of pain. You don't need to fill the silence. Really I'm fine. Naruto said. The girl simply scoffed at him. You know it was fine, I didn't need you to help me with this. He said snappishly as his hackles rose at the dismissive scoff she gave him. Oh really, maybe you didn't want my help but I wanted to help you. You've been helping me plenty even before the rule change. Katniss replied gradually speaking more softly. The pair grew silent at that as Katniss grew close to finishing. She paused briefly to glance at his face only for both of them to freeze as they locked eyes with one another. Blue and gray unwavering as they looked at one another. I never really thanked you for all that. Or for helping back in 12, with my family. Katniss said awkwardly. Naruto huffed faintly while shaking his head. Don't think about it like that. You help me first, I just don't like owing people anything. Katniss was quiet for a bit before she turned to look up at him again. She frowned at his words the last few weeks had really started to confuse her and his choice of words both compounded that and sting her slightly. That was all it was, huh? She asked quietly. Almost whispering. Naruto stared back at her. Only now did he realize that they were so close to one another inches apart. He opened his mouth to say something before closing it again when words failed to form. They continued to simply sit pressed against one another and eyes locked until Naruto felt a pull. He wasn't certain what caused him to do it, but he leaned forward and kissed Katniss. Deeply. The girl was stunned but after a brief second of surprise her eyes closed and she returned his kiss just as deeply. Slowly the two pulled back when they needed to catch their breath. Naruto coughed and cleared his throat, clearly surprised by his own actions. The wave of peace and pleasure that washed over him during the kiss was still very present on his mind but the boy didn't know what to do and had no idea how to answer her inevitable question of why he had done that. You should get some rest. I will sit on watch for a while to make sure the careers didn't pick up our trail. Naruto said before hustling out of the cave without a look back at Katniss. Had he looked he would have felt some relief. She was blushing, worse than he was in fact, and a warm soft smile had splayed itself across her face as she gingerly touched her fingertips to her lips. Katniss was happy he hadn't seen her reaction to his kiss, she was embarrassed by it. Like him she was unsure what her feelings really were and battling her own thoughts regarding him. Unfortunately for her, while Naruto had missed her reaction to his kiss, beyond returning it during the act itself, the multitude of cameras set up by the capital had not. The very real and tender moment between the tributes was broadcasted across the country, 
even to the rioting districts. No. Especially to the rioting districts. The capital. Caesar and Claudius practically glowed after watching the interactions with Naruto and Katniss. For something that would be such an unimportant event with any normal pair of teens across the nation was the talking point of practically every person in the capital and plenty of others across the districts. Naruto and Katniss were naturals in the talk show host's opinion. The kids didn't even realize the effect their actions likely had on the country, managing to achieve exactly what Seneca Crane had hoped for as the hotly stoked rebellious ideas of the districts began to flicker slightly in the face of such a change with the games. Everyone's focus is on these two young lovers now, Caesar. Claudius commented. Indeed, my friend. Such sweethearts these two are. So bashful with their emotions but despite that our man Naruto is showing his blood nature by taking the lead with Katniss. Caesar replied. With that new suspension of the single victor rule this entire year has become so much more intriguing. Claudius cheered. I couldn't agree more. Though it must be a disappointment for all those poor boys and girls back in District 12, with both Naruto and Katniss taking one another off of the market. Caesar joked, getting a characteristic over-the-top laugh from his co-host. The two went on to replay the moment of Naruto kissing Katniss, slowing the footage to pick apart every aspect of the kiss, especially the moment when it became clear that she was returning the act. District 12 Gail Hawthorne did his best to ignore the glances of his cellmates. His closeness to Katniss Everdeen was pretty well known among their age group in the seam. Most of those in the detention center at the moment had been a part of the riot along with him and had been locked up as one of the leaders of the riot when it occurred. The teen kept his face tucked away from the others to avoid the sight of his burning face and slightly stinging eyes. Much like the conflicted and confused emotions of Naruto and Katniss, Gale was distraught with his feelings at the moment. He was no naive boy. He knew his interest in Katniss was more than that of a close friend or even a simple crush. He had grown up along with her and been closer with her than anyone else except for maybe her little sister Primrose. She and Naruto weren't close like that. He told himself they were doing it for the show. Pretending and playing the parts that they had to play to survive. He still felt a tightness spread across his chest and a burn grow in his eyes. Seeing her return Naruto's kiss and the showman running everything replaying it over and over again seemed like the capital was rubbing it all in his face. Despite all that though, here in the detention center he couldn't escape the television and the broadcast as the games continued. When Naruto returned from standing watch, not that it hadn't been an excuse for some privacy to get a handle of his emotions, he found Katniss setting up a place to sleep beside his own. The sun was already disappearing behind the horizon and they would need to head out for the rendezvous with Thresh in the morning if his alliance still stood. I didn't think you would mind if. Katniss murmured. Ah, no you're fine. Naruto replied as he moved over to his own sleeping place. Katniss nodded and finished setting up her bedding. Naruto crawled into his own and lay down facing the girl as she finished up. Exhaustion from the games and the knowledge that they were likely watched ensured neither attempted to kiss once again or continue any more emotional moments. As Katniss laid down though, they found themselves naturally pulling one another closer and wrapping each other in their arms. Both privately told themselves it was because they were feeding off of the body heat of their partner. In the morning we need to set out for that tree I hid you in after the tracker jacket hove situation. I agreed to meet Thresh there. Naruto said. The boy from District 11, right? Katniss asked quietly. Yeah. He and I agreed to help one another find and protect you and the other District 11 tribute. Naruto explained. Ru. She whispered. Yeah, you were there weren't you? Naruto didn't ask her. He could already tell. I tried to save her. Katniss' lip quivered and without thought Naruto pressed his lips to her brow and pulled her in closely. I'm sure you did. He comforted her. Tomorrow might end up being more difficult than he wanted. He hoped Thresh saw reason. 
Slowly the two teens fell asleep tightly twisted together, much to the joy of most of the country watching them from home and the anguish of a young man in District 12. Naruto and Katniss woke with the sun or whatever acted as the sun for their games. They collected some supplies and quickly prepared a sizable breakfast for themselves. Naruto's arm was still in no small amount of pain but the mending Katniss had done on it was far better than anything Naruto could have managed himself. Only partially because it was his own arm. Mainly because he simply didn't have that much skill with mending his injuries as he would have liked to. Where did you pick the doctoring stuff up at? He asked as he pried a morsel of fish away from his meal and popped it into his mouth. Katniss glanced his way and swallowed down her own food before cocking her head to the side to answer. I think I actually learned it from my little sister mostly. She learned a lot of it from my mom though, at least I think she did. Hm your mom was a seamstress right? He asked just making conversation. Not really. To some extent, my grandparents were tailors or something on her side. Why are you asking? She said with a shrug before turning her attention away from her makeshift bark plate and focusing on the boy. Naruto blinked as if wondering the same thing himself. Why was he asking about her mother and grandparents? Why did any of that matter? Dunno, curiosity maybe? He asked. Katniss snorted softly. Curiosity about what my mom did as a living? Yeah, I mean I know your dad was a miner. I kind of remember him, he and my dad talked a lot, so did some of the other miners but your dad more often than most. Naruto explained. Katniss perked up at that. Her eyes locked on his own making it clear this conversation was now under her control. It might as well have been an interrogation from this point on. What did my dad want to talk with yours about so much? SHS asked though the slight bent in her question made the hair on his neck raise slightly. He had no reason not to answer but if he had, he'd have likely decided to think twice about it when hearing the heat in her voice. I don't really know for the most part. I was pretty little, but I know it had to do with conditions in the mines. Naruto replied. Katniss nodded a bit disappointed with his answer obviously but also not seeming to have expected anything else. Makes sense. He was a foreman and all that. She mumbled. Yeah. I remember your dad was sort of picked by the others to speak for them. You remind me a lot of him. Naruto said. The girl focused on him again, fish breakfast having been forgotten entirely by now. What do you mean? Well, you know. He said with a shrug. No, what do you mean? She demanded a bit harsher than necessary. He didn't blame her though. He understood her feelings at the moment. You're like he was. I don't just mean looks. Brown hair and gray eyes or whatever. I mean you seem tough. Like you could fight for a long time if you needed to. He mumbled out. What? Forget I said anything. It's stupid. No, no, no sorry. I just, for you to say that. She said with a soft smile and a much lesser tint of a blush than the day before. What do you mean by that? He asked, completely confused by this point in the conversation. Just, thank you for the compliment. I know you meant it as one at least. She said with a small chuckle. Naruto flushed before standing and turning away from the girl, avoiding looking at her as he did so. He didn't need to be acting like some smitten kid while in the damned Hunger Games. It was a compliment. Most folks from back home got a hungry look in their eyes like they are ready to fight but most of them don't look like they could keep it up for long. You're different though, scrappy I guess. He muttered as he packed up the things he would need for their day. Scrappy? Katniss said, though Naruto ignored her now as he continued to pack up. Katniss grinned slightly and set to work finishing her breakfast before also packing up. They made the occasional bit of small talk as they got around for their day. It was strange. How quickly the two of them were becoming comfortable around one another. 
they could almost forget they were in the Hunger Games and imagine it as if they had decided to tag along together for a hunt. It was a great change from earlier in the games. Having the company and security of one another nearby was comforting in ways they hadn't realized it could be. Rather than the exact route that they had used to reach the shelter Naruto had made them, the pair of tributes from District 12 took a longer, more scenic route toward the rendezvous with Thresh. Treading too much on the same path would make it easy to pick out for other tributes. Especially for the likes of the careers. With Thresh we should be able to match the career pack with numbers. That District 1 girl is dead. Katniss commented. Yeah. Don't count the others still out there out of the games just yet. They could pop up at any time and really make things a mess. Naruto replied. Katniss thought about the boy that was responsible for Rue's death. She knew that well enough. He hadn't been one of the people she was worried about and then he was simply just there and Rue was dead. She needed to change the subject. Focus on something else. The thought of Rue hurt even if she hardly knew her. How well do you know Thresh? Katniss asked. Naruto paused for a moment at that and glanced toward her. Katniss noticed the thoughtful look on his face but he was turning forward and leading the path through the woods again before she could really study his expression. He's like us. Outer District, would have been his last year in the drawing if he hadn't been pulled. Naruto said. It was Rue's first. Primps too. Katniss murmured. Naruto stopped again and turned to face Katniss. She averted her eyes this time. She knew she had said too much for him to drop it though. You volunteered for Prim, I'll do everything I can to make sure you see her again. Naruto said suddenly before turning and continuing yet again. She blinked briefly. What? Naruto didn't reply as they continued on. Naruto, where did that come from? She asked. It's nothing. Just, I was talking with Thresh. He intended to make sure Ru won and went home even if it meant he had to die to do it. I thought about it since then and... Naruto shrugged as they continued on. You didn't think twice about volunteering for Prim. She is lucky to have a sister like you and you're lucky to have her and your mom you know? We can both go home now. They changed the rules. Katniss said. She felt incredibly uncomfortable about what he was implying when he promised she would see her mother and sister again. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm as good as Thresh. I really I dunno. Maybe I would do the same but it doesn't matter now anyway. Naruto ground out as they neared the rendezvous. They fell back into silence as they approached the tree. The pair of them remained cautious and ready. Katniss already had an arrow knocked on her bowstring while Naruto tightly gripped the handle of his largest knife with his good hand. Thresh? He called out. The two District 12 tributes remained silent for a time while waiting and hoping for the other boy to appear. It felt like an eternity but as if appearing from thin air the larger boy rose up out of a section of tall overgrown grasses and bushes. Naruto? He called out. Yeah, it's me and Katniss. Naruto replied but he didn't stand up and Katniss was content to follow his lead. They were mostly concealed by the brush themselves though she doubted that the boy from Eleven didn't have at least a good idea of where they were. We still good? Thresh asked in their general direction. I want to think so, but I know losing Ru could have changed things. Naruto replied cautiously. Smart. Thresh said calmly. Slowly his posture changed to a relaxed stance. Unless one of you did it, I don't have a reason to go after you yet. That's the way I see it anyway. Naruto turned to lock eyes with Katniss. She could see the thoughts running through his head behind those blue eyes. But slowly he nodded. Then carefully he stood, remaining on guard but also making a point to not threaten the older boy. We didn't do it. Katniss killed the one that did though. Naruto replied. Good. Little Ru should have been the one to go home you know. Thresh said somberly. I get you. We are still good though. 
Naruto asked cautiously. He doubted he would have been as calm and relaxed as Thresh was. We are good. I, wasn't earlier. We're good now though. He said with a sad sigh. I'm sorry about her. I should have been there with her but Dash, Katniss began. She felt so guilty about Rue's death on her own. Seeing the obvious pain in the older boy's eyes. The eyes of a boy who was intent on dying for Rue. Those same eyes flashed dangerously with anger and Naruto found his hand tightening on the hilt of his knife again. Just drop it twelve. Just stop, you killed the one that, just leave it at that alright? Thresh stiffly said while cutting Katniss off. She slowly nodded her head and had to fight back some tears at the thought of Rue's death once again. Tense as they were, the three slowly calmed down as they moved and fell into a more comfortable bit of conversation. Mostly talking about what it was like back home for each of them. The comparisons from the farms of District 11 to the Merchant Quarter of 12 and finally the seam in 12 were a bit surprising. Despite such stark differences in production and the like the overall grim oppressive nature was almost identical in all three areas. It was almost wholesome that they could bond in such a way despite the incredibly depressing circumstances. Before long the trio of outer district tributes had made their way back to the lines of traps and defenses that Naruto had created. The cave itself was starting to feel a bit crowded with three of them, though Naruto didn't complain overly much as Katniss had taken to being right at his side when they were inside it now. Just having her close enough to brush up against him regularly was calming. A bomb to his senses after days of worrying about if she was all right out in the arena alone. Obviously all of them remained a bit tense with one another. Naruto and Katniss had absolutely no reason to fight one another now. They could truly trust one another. Sadly that level of faith wasn't something they could gain with Thresh or him with either of them. The game's design simply made it impossible, after all they would have to kill one another in the end or at the least let the other die. The trio made a meal and talked a bit of strategy. THRESH mentioned that the careers had not only moved camp but had managed to recruit the boy from District 6 to support them. Evidently they had him surrounded on a rock ledge and gave him the chance to face them in a free-for-all when it was just the four of them left over. Like that will happen. The careers will kill him the moment the rest of us are dead then Kato and Clove will take on Marvel together. Katniss scoffed. It gives him hope for a chance though. So they feed it and now they have the numbers on us again. Naruto said with a sigh. Where did they move their base to? Katniss asked Thresh. I'm not sure about the exact spot but somewhere further down the river. Lots of rock out toppings and thinner trees. Pretty much impossible to sneak into the area they are in and find their actual camp. Thresh explained. There aren't many of us left. The game makers will start making things happen soon. Naruto said, causing Katniss to softly rub at her leg. I wonder what they'll do to force us together. Thresh pondered, something devious. That's for sure. Katniss said before grimacing as her stomach rumbled. They needed to eat again. Let's fish some more. Can't have too much fish in your diet. Naruto joked. What I wouldn't give for a nice stale loaf of bread right now. Thresh complained as he glanced at the horrible tasting ration bars they still had left. Some slimy pond scum fish will have to do. Naruto teased, causing both of the other tributes to glare at him and Katniss to flick a stone his way. You are lucky I'm so damn hungry. Katniss huffed though she followed after her partner to help spear some good-sized fish for dinner. The trio had honestly struck up an easy friendship by the time their meal was done. It was nice even if the whole of their interactions were tainted with the knowledge that not all of them would leave the arena alive. As the sun began to settle the tributes all jolted as the face of Seneca Crane appeared above them with a smarmy grin looking farm to clean compared to the dirty and bloody tributes. Attention tributes. Attention. You have all made it to the final eight competitors. To celebrate your victories over the lesser two-thirds of your competition we have decided to offer you a grand feast. 
While food and drink will be available the real prize will be the 8 weapon or armor sets offered up for each of your specialties. Don't miss out otherwise someone else may just claim your prize. The feast will arrive at sunup tomorrow morning so be prepared. This is the only announcement at this time. With that the face of their professional tormentor faded from view and the sky returned to the starry void it had been moments before. Well, we were wondering how it was they were going to force us all in together. Thresh sighed. Devious as hell. As expected. Naruto agreed. We could just not go. We have food and water. Weapons too even if they aren't perfectly suited for us. Katniss said. If we don't go the careers are definitely going and that means they will have an advantage on us. Naruto said with a frown. So we have to go? Katniss asked. It's the better play. He nodded back. It's gonna be a fight. A hard one. The careers will use it as a chance to fight us in the open. They have the training and the numbers again. Thresh commented. Yeah but it's worse if we don't face them. Eventually they'll come at us with everything and if they get all the weapons and armor they could want them we will be too badly disadvantaged. We have to go, Naruto explained to his comrades. The group fell into silence at that. The knowledge of a looming fight to the death was normal in the Hunger Games but knowingly walking into an ambush was a bit of a tall order. Naruto was right though. They had a better chance going and fighting on more even footing than simply passing the entire thing over. The group prepared for bed and set up for the night. Before long they bedded down and Thresh couldn't help the conflicted feelings as he looked over at Naruto and Katniss. He knew Naruto trusted him greatly, especially after the situation with that District 10 boy had happened earlier in the games. It was clear that while Naruto did indeed trust Thresh, he was protective and far more trusting of Katniss. Naruto had laid in a position between the other two occupants of the cave and Katniss had almost naturally wrapped herself tightly around him from behind. It was hard to imagine them as anything other than a couple from their appearance even as Naruto faced away from the girl and more toward the opening of their little hideout. Always vigilant for an attack. Seeing the two of them together threatened him with some dark thoughts though and he went to sleep set on having a conversation with Naruto in the morning. A very important one. The Capital Broadcasting Center. That brings an end to another day of the 74th Annual Hunger Games folks. Lots of build up there today even if there isn't much fighting. What do you think about today, Claudius? Caesar asked his co-host. A much needed break after the event surrounding the cornucopia I think Caesar. We've had a somewhat slow couple of days since the rule change but it's given us some time to enjoy some of our competitor interactions once again. Claudius replied. I couldn't agree with you more Temple Smith my good man, from the heartwarming kissing that we got to peek in on with Naruto and Katniss to the interactions of Kato and Clove now that they know they can go home together, things are really starting to draw us all in. Now with the added elements of Thresh joining up with his fellow Outer District comrades and this feast event to be held in the morning, we are possibly looking at our last peaceful night here in the games. Caesar said almost sounding sad that the bloodshed would be ending soon. Claudius nodded somberly before the pair launched into yet another conversation about the actions of one of the remaining tributes in the games. Naruto awoke before Katniss, mainly because of Thresh gently tapping his shoulder. The sight of the larger boy standing hunched over him when he awoke caused Naruto's instincts to kick in as he grappled for his knife on to pause and let out a breath to try and calm down when Thresh held up his hands to show he was no danger. I almost stabbed you. Naruto hissed quietly, careful not to wake up Katniss. They had all been exhausted so he intended to let her get as much rest as he could. Relax. I just needed to talk to you for a little bit before we head out for the feast or whatever it is they are calling the bloodbath part too. Thresh said as he stepped away toward the mouth of the cave. Naruto eyed the other boy for a moment before glancing toward the sleeping form of Katniss. Even in sleep she looked tense after he pulled away from her. He felt a bit guilty for that but if Thresh needed to talk then he was sure it was something that needed his full attention. Okay, lead the way. 
Naruto said as he pried himself loose of Katniss as gently as possible. Once he was fully extricated from her arms he followed Thresh out and they both stopped at the edge of the small pond. They were both silent, simply staring at the dark water and trying to ignore the bite of the chilly morning air. The sun had still not come up yet so it was dark and almost silent in the woods. Well? Naruto prodded carefully. Thresh sighed out as he turned toward Naruto with a grim look. In an instant Naruto knew what the topic of the conversation was going to be. We can't stay allied for long. I don't want it to come down to me or one of you, you know? Thresh admitted. Naruto slowly nodded. He felt the same way after all. You know, seeing you two in there. It's hard, kinda. Like one more day and I could have had hope of both me and Rue going home. You know what I said, what I wanted. I still have people I care about back home too. And you too I just. Thresh said tried to explain why he had been willing to die for Rue to win but wasn't willing to for Naruto and Katniss despite actually getting along with them. Hey man. I get it. Really, I kind of get it. I don't think I'm as good of a person as you are but I definitely don't blame you for well. Naruto, awkwardly consoled the other boy. Yeah, with the it was just obvious but with you two it's different. Sorry. Thresh said. It's fine, really. I mean if the rules hadn't changed and it was just me and Katniss, I still don't know if I could do like you planned to do for Rue. Naruto replied. They fell into silence again. Both just trying to make the peaceful company of their odd friendship last. Such a strange place to find friends. Still they couldn't deny it. After the fest we have to break the alliance. Win or lose at the cornucopia today we can't stick together. The end is too close. Thresh said seriously. Naruto sighed tiredly. Yeah. The blonde turned to the other boy and held out a hand. Under other circumstances I think we would have made great friends, Eleven. The bigger boy chuckled morbidly. For sure. Twelve. He grasped Naruto's hand with the force of a vice and shook solidly. Naruto. Thresh said his friend's name with a small smile. Thresh. Naruto replied before both broke the handshake and turned back to the cave. The moment was left behind them. Pushed aside in their tumultuous minds as they focused on preparing for the battle that was to come today. Back inside, Katniss had just woken up and was rubbing the sleep from her eyes. She shot a questioning look at her partner but relaxed more at the reassuring smile he sent her way. Already the two were coming to rely on one another heavily and understand each other easily. We need to get around if we want to set up in a good spot to jump on the careers at the cornucopia. Naruto said. The other two had no arguments with that and quickly got to work readying for the day. With their bellies as full as they could be all things considered and their weapons cleaned up and readied for a fight they trailed through the traps toward the center of the arena. Once they arrived at the tree line with the cornucopia in sight, the arena was just beginning to light up as the faux sun climbed over the horizon. As more and more light spread across the landscape and chased away the shadows the three tributes settled in to ambush the careers when and if they arrived. That ended up being a long wait. Hours even. It was hardest on Thresh. He wasn't used to the patience needed with hunting that Naruto and Katniss had long since gotten used to. He repeatedly shifted before glancing at the calm and rather intense pair from District 12 and forcing himself to calm down once again. Naruto and Katniss kept sweeping their eyes along the tree lines hoping for any kind of indication as to where their opponents might be at. The careers weren't considered a big threat just for their skill at killing though. They were trained from childhood for this sort of thing and when it came to facing their competition could be incredibly patient and cunning. Eventually though something did catch their attention. Katniss drew back her bowstring ready to eliminate a career tribute only to pause. It wasn't one of the career pack. Instead it was the District 7 girl, the same Katniss had run into on the first day. 
In a blur of bright red hair the girl bolted forward toward the tables and snatched up the bag with her number on it. One filled with food, water, a coat, and of course her weapon. A thin blade that looked to be razor sharp and just long enough to peek through someone if it was rammed into their chest. No one but the redhead moved as the rest of the competitors watched her continue on from their hiding spots. At least until she neared the tree lean again. Suddenly an irritated clove materialized from the tree line and let loose a dagger toward the running girl's back. Or rather she had intended to. The arrow notching a tiny gash in her cheek as it barely missed her face stopped her mid-motion. A millimeter forward and she would have at the least lost her eyes if not her life. She dove back into the trees for a second before she and the rest of the career pack plus their fodder edition of the boy from District 6 came charging across the open field in haphazard and random paths to avoid Katniss marksmanship. It wasn't perfect at that, unfortunately for them. The District 6 boy screamed as an arrow planted itself on his left bicep. Sadly her other two shots, aimed for Clove and Cato went wide as the careers changed direction suddenly. It took hardly any time at all for the group to cross the clearing with the cornucopia. Deciding he'd rather meet the careers with a charge of his own, Thresh charges forward soon followed by Naruto and even Katniss as she purposefully lagged behind to try and catch an opening to shoot one of their enemies. Thresh and Kato, being the largest and oldest two in the games from the beginning clashed sickle against sword. It was exactly the kind of fight that the people of the capital wanted to see. Warriors. Gladiators. Boys trying to murder one another with all the power and strength someone newly in their prime could wield against one another. Marvel attempted to attack Thresh while his back was turned away from him but Naruto caught the shaft of the District 1 fighter's spear in his hand before planting his boot squarely in the other boy's chest and forcing him back. Clove looked briefly torn between helping Kato or charging on after Katniss but as she caught sight of the other girl knocking another arrow she made her choice and opened up her own engagement with a knife narrowly missed Katniss' head and instead took a few strands of her hair. Three distinct fights began to form. Naruto was more than a match for Marvel but the mix of the spear's reach and the boy from District 6 supporting him kept Naruto on the defensive. Thresh and Kato were both powerful and deadly however while Thresh was larger, stronger, and even faster than Kato. The career tribute had been trained for this and kept the boy from District 11 on the back foot as well. Katniss and Clove found themselves both out of their element. Neither was exactly large and powerful and both preferred range to close up fighting, but the rough hand to hand they had engaged was a display in violence most rarely saw even in the games. Both fought dirty, kicking dirt, aiming for eyes, everything they could to gain the advantage. Something that sadly Clove was steadily managing to do. The people of Twelve were nothing if not cunning though. Suddenly changing her tactics, Katniss fell backward and lashed out with her foot to plant an incredibly painful kick between Clove's legs not only buying herself a chance to gain some space and time to knock an arrow once again but also to drop Clove to her knees. As Katniss drew her arrow back though she caught sight of another change in the fighting. Naruto had pushed past the spear held by Marvel and driven his knife hilt deep into the other boy's throat. Before Marvel to the ground though, the boy from six drove his own spear into Naruto's thigh causing him to cry out in pain and fall alongside the quickly dying Marvel. Seeing the other boy about to finish off her partner Katniss changed targets and shit him through the eye. He jerked and froze as if time had briefly stopped. Katniss didn't get a chance to watch him collapse to the ground a second later because Clove had regained herself enough to launch another attack at her. She tackled Katniss to the ground and tightly gripped the archer's throat to strangle her. Katniss tried to fight back but at a terrifying speed her body became weaker and her vision began to dim. Just as she felt certain she would die she felt not only Clove's grip loosen but the girl be forced off of her entirely when Thresh booted her across the side of the face and sent her sprawling with a mouthful of blood and some broken teeth. Thresh wasn't built for long periods of fighting though and Katniss could see that Kato had purposefully been letting the bigger boy tire himself out hoping to overwhelm a tired opponent. The loss of two of his group had changed things though. 
Despite his injury, Naruto had struggled back to his feet and was inbound. Thresh was exhausted but still more than ready for a fight and while Katniss's bow had been knocked away he doubted he could kill her before the two boys got him. Clove get back to camp. He barked before sprinting toward the table and grabbing the bags for himself, his partner, as well as their two dead comrades. He wanted badly to take the rest but he simply couldn't carry all of it. Clove and Kato both crashed back through the tree lean while the exhausted and injured outer district tributes let them go. All to lick their wounds and catch their breaths. Naruto collapsed down beside the gasping and coughing Katniss and began working to try and plug the wound in his thigh. It wasn't as deep as it normally would have been. Thanks mostly to the fact that Naruto's attacker had previously been wounded by Katniss and couldn't put too much force behind the strike. It was still a spear wound to the leg though and if it was ignored Naruto was sure he'd suffer for it. As she managed to regain her breath, Katniss quickly set about helping him to stop the bleeding and bandage it as best that they could with their supplies. All while Thresh caught his breath and watched. He eyed the two he had worked with up to this point with. They were extremely vulnerable right now. Naruto had set his knife down while he applied pressure while Katniss had still yet to collect any of her gear while she worked on her partner's leg. Thresh could kill the both of them without much trouble. A quick violent burst of action and they would be dead and he would be that much closer to going home. Naruto jerked slightly toward his knife when the sickle thumped into the grass beside him. He stared at it for a moment before looking at Thresh. We can't be allies anymore. From this point on we'll just betray one another. Looks like they sent me a better blade than that sickle to use. I'll grab my rewards and leave. Good luck to both of you. He said simply before receiving a sober nod from the blonde in return. Thresh walked away after that. Katniss eyed him as he went. Soon she shook her head and got back to work on her fellow tribute's injury. Once it was patched up as best as she could manage in their current situation she helped Naruto to stand and gathered up their gear. The two collected their rewards and made their way back to their cave. Naruto limping painfully while struggling to not put too much weight on his leg as they went. They were incredibly vulnerable at the moment but thankfully after the fight at the cornucopia it seemed like the two careers were licking their own wounds and organizing for what would most likely be their final showdown. The thought of such a confrontation filled Naruto with no small amount of dread though. They might have hoped to level the field today but even with the District 1 and 6 tributes eliminated the two remaining careers now had the lion's share of remaining resources, weapons, and armor. Nothing in the Hunger Games can be easy after all. Capital Broadcasting Center What can I say besides, wow! Caesar cried out. Claudius nodded along with an unnaturally stiff smile. You all saw it with me folks, was that a day or what? Down by another two valiant tributes and what a show they gave us, huh? Caesar said as the two most recently killed tributes appeared on the screen. I am really curious to see how the finale of this year's games will turn out. Claudius commented. So am I. We have two full districts from opposite ends of the country left to square off though our rough and tumble District 12 tributes, Naruto has really started to collect some painful injuries that will slow him down. Caesar pointed out, not to mention the careers that seem like their natural adversaries have just gotten quite the haul from the feast. Weapons, armor, food, and medicine that they have already started to implement. Claudia said as images of the advanced flexible armor was being put on by Kato and Clove while opposite them images of a limping Naruto was guided through the woods by a roughed up Katniss. It really will be exciting to see where this all goes from here. Although we definitely can't discount our two wild cards. Thresh may have been on the same side as Naruto and Katniss for a few days but today he made it clear he is now once more on his own and I'm sure if they meet again a fight is bound to happen. Our last contestant has simply been avoiding others and foraging a smart strategy that has kept her alive and healthy this long. Caesar broke down the remaining survivors in the arena. It has gotten her into the final six at the very least. I can't wait to see more. Agreed. Stay tuned here, Paynum you beautiful viewers.
Things may be winding down but that's only because they are picking up in preparation for our final climax. The 74th annual Hunger Games are now down to our final six. Caesar cheered. Hey Mitch had come through once again. The little parcel had set down just outside the mouth of the cave and contained a medical foam designed for surgeries and emergency field use. Just as the sun began to set they found themselves back at Naruto's campsite with all their rewards plus that little extra help from their mentor. Katniss was half inclined to give the man a hug once they got out of there. Or she would have been if the message that came along with their little parcel hadn't been a teasing remark commenting that she and Naruto were cute together. It was an annoying reminder that they were on camera for the whole world to watch. That just made what was coming next all the more unbearable. Still it had to be done. I can do it myself. The blonde before argued. No you can't. I already had to do your arm up for you again since we got this stuff. Stop acting like a big baby. Besides, I'm not asking you to strip for me. Katniss argued back with a warm blush on her cheeks. No, you're just trying to get my pants off. He replied, causing her to roll her eyes at the joke. Just, can we get this over with please? I want to help you. Let me do that. Katniss softly pleased. As she, and unknown to her most of their viewers expected, he folded almost immediately. He struggled to his feet at least until she helped him the rest of the way causing both to avert their eyes from one another. Just, like, be quick. Naruto bit out as he fumbled with his belt and pants before slowly peeling them down his legs to reveal a pair of grey boxer briefs and a very painful looking stab wound on his thigh. I will. Now lay down all right. Katniss urged as she helped him to the bed like outcropping of stone. Pushing thoughts surrounding Naruto aside to do what she needed to do, Katniss gently pulled the leg of his underwear up higher away from the bloody wound. She had to clean it and stitch it up before applying the foam. It was capable of closing small injuries, but the stab wound from the spearhead was a bit jagged and longer than her hand. It would work a lot faster if she did what she could with the wound first. Naruto hissed slightly as the small needle pierced through his skin and began pulling the thin line through after it. He remained silent though and did his best to stay still as he let Katniss work. She was focused on the task at hand but she couldn't help the embarrassment at the situation. Only compounded by the knowledge they were no doubt on the screens of every household and business in Paynham. I'm trying to be fast. Katniss mumbled as she pressed the needle through his skin once again. Emichim. Naruto grunted with a sharp nod. Soon Katniss had finished the hard part and cleaned up the wound as best as she could. She pulled the container for the medical foam out and carefully unscrewed the carrying case before as gently as possible pressing nozzle into Naruto injury causing him to hiss slightly. It says it feels you are going to feel pressure and some discomfort before it becomes numb. She warned. That's fine. Just as long as it does its job. Naruto said through gritted teeth. All right. Katniss said before biting her lip in worry and pressing down the applicator button. The thin gel quickly oozed out of the nozzle and filled the gaps between the crude stitches that Katniss had applied. Soon it began foaming up until it encased the injury in a dense but soft white foam that had been dyed pink from mixing with Naruto's blood. Katniss quickly covered it with a bandage and helped Naruto to pull his pants back up. He did lightly swat her hands away as he did his belt though causing both to blush as Katniss had realized she was a bit too helpful in that regard. There is a little left, more than enough for your arm if you want me to apply some to it too. Katniss offered. Yeah that sounds good. My leg is already numb. Naruto said in surprise at the speed the medicine worked at. It's fast acting, seals and heals wounds in as little as eight hours. Katniss said, reading the packaging. Heh, I think that's for smaller cuts. Hopefully it still makes a difference. I can't help but feel like the game makers will force something to happen soon. Katniss said as she put everything away. Careful to save what she could of the medical supplies they had left, after all who knew what else would be thrown their way. 
I'm sure Cato and Clove got the same kind of help we just did. They'll be in top condition when we meet again. Naruto said. We'll figure it out. There's still Thresh and Foxface to worry about too. Katniss said. Foxface. He chuckled faintly, pointedly ignoring the thought of facing off with Thresh. The two sat in silence for a while before Naruto slid over a bit and beckoned Katniss to lay down next to him. It was late after all and they both needed some sleep. I'll stand watch dash, Katniss began to say. No, you're exhausted. Naruto said as he snatched her wrist with his good hand. We can't both sleep, what if dash, Katniss weakly argued. The traps will at the least alert us to someone coming if they don't just kill them. We both need the sleep, badly. He insisted, tugging light at her arm. The girl gave in and crawled onto the makeshift bed beside him, stiffening for a moment when he pulled her closer to him. She didn't take long to wrap her own arms around him as well as they lay side by side, a mere few inches between their faces. I think laying like this blocks the cameras pretty well. If we keep our voices to a whisper we might have some privacy. Naruto said, causing Katniss' eyes to widen before she smiled slightly. Good thinking. She whispered. Naruto just smiled at her, clearly pretty tired both from normal exhaustion and as a small side effect of the medicine used on his injuries. Both remained silent for a bit, growing more comfortable with the close proximity to one another. We could actually be going home soon. Katniss quietly said as she locked eyes with him. We could. Heh, it is messed up but I'm glad I'm here with you Katniss. We will both be getting home soon, we just have to be ruthless for a little longer. Naruto said. I, I think I'm glad too. Katniss said as she leaned her head forward and pressed it against his. So, think you will let me kiss you again? Naruto muttered almost silently. Are you willing to try and dash, she teased only to be cut off as he pressed forward to kiss her followed by her doing the same. It was short but far from an innocent little peck. It was clear what he felt at the moment. She felt it too, a warmth that she wasn't exactly used to filled her as they continued to kiss for a short while. I wish we could do that more without an audience. He said as they stopped. We will when we win. Katniss said as they both slowly drifted to sleep. District 12 Across the country the citizens of Paynham watched the Hunger Games continue. Thoughts surrounding the losses suffered by the games had gradually sputtered out as attention turned to the romance between the District 12 tributes. Cato and Clove had begun their own romance it seemed. Though they were far less camera shy than Naruto and Katniss or perhaps they were simply shameless as they soon began rutting like animals for the entire nation to see. Most preferred the tender moments between the outer district competitors to the lust of the careers. Especially the rest of the Everdeen household. Katniss' mother and little sister had been watching every moment of the games. They never expected to watch Katniss and a boy fall in love with one another on television. Not that it bothered them. With the new rule about same district survivors and the fact that they had watched the boy stick his neck out for Katniss already, they felt more and more confident in getting Katniss back home. He had practically already won over Katniss' mother and sister. Not that Prim didn't plan to give her big sister plenty of a hard time about her and Naruto. Unfortunately not all of the people Katniss cared for in District 12 were as enthusiastic about the situation. Gale had been released along with the others and his fighting spirit had been snuffed out as he watched the games alongside his and Katniss' family. They watched Katniss play nurse for Naruto and the close embrace the two shared afterward. Despite Naruto and Katniss blocking the faces from the cameras and whispering, every word they spoke to one another was heard across the nation. As was the makeout session they had. As amused as both Prim and her mother were by Katniss' romantic situations with Naruto, they knew it was hard for Gale. The boy still seemed adamant that it was all a show for support. However, Prim had quietly pointed out that Naruto had tried to tell the capital off publicly. He didn't really care for looking good for them, even if it meant he would die. 
Gail had quietly left to hunt in the woods after that. Things would be difficult when Katniss and Naruto returned. When? Prim actually smiled up at the screen as the two talking heads chattered about the remaining members of the games. She was certain her sister would come home now. It was so close. As Naruto awoke he noticed the dull ache where his wounds had been. It was obvious that the effects of the foam had faded but the pain he would normally feel was practically gone. Just some remaining soreness lingered. Slowly, and carefully so as not to wake Katniss he pulled his arm around to look at the bandaged wound. After unwinding the bandages carefully so as not to jostle the girl who was pressed up against his chest with her head tucked under his chin, he took stock of his wound. Besides the dull aching throb that remained all that showed for the injury was a jagged scar and a dark bruise. Even the makeshift stitches had been forced out of the injury. That's amazing. He muttered. This kind of thing was limited to the capital and the wealthier districts. Ironic being as he expected they would have the least need to use such a product. With a content sigh he laid back down and enjoyed the semi-comfortable position he was in. Even laying on rock with little more than dirt and pine needles as padding he found it hard to now be comfortable with the weight of Katniss on his chest. It took his mind out of the games for a while and for the first time in a long time he felt his attention drift to thoughts about the future. He didn't honestly have any. Prior to the games he had been so focused in his day-to-day -day and on eventually getting in front of a camera to bellow about his anger that he hadn't thought of anything else. Maybe he had privately thought he would die very soon after voicing any of his thoughts. He felt like he was probably supposed to be dead, having found himself in the arena. He wasn't though. What was more was he suddenly had more to think about. A bit of a harrowing thought after so long stuck in his one-track mentality. His moment of contentment and reflection faded as Katniss shifted and her eyes began to flutter open. She yawned slightly as she brought her hands up to rub at her eyes before waking fully. Her smile was small and soft, but a very pleasant sight for Naruto. Good morning. She managed to say tiredly. Good morning. He replied, waiting for her to realize that they had pressed even closer to one another as they slept. Once she had she blushed but rather than push away and make some space as he expected her to do she seemed to nuzzle further into her position. He almost wanted to just let her, unfortunately he both needed to check his leg wound and relieve a fluid situation that had built up overnight. We should really get around. We'll need to start making some plans for what to do, plus I need to check on my leg and handle some morning business. Naruto said while averting eye contact. Katniss was out of the way in an instant, intently staring at his leg before gripping his arm lightly and checking over the wound there. You're a hell of a doctor. He joked as he gently pried his arm free and dropped his trousers just enough for Katniss to check the larger of his two injuries. That foam stuff is amazing. Katniss said as she undid the bandages and found an almost entirely healed wound. Still a bit scabbed over but it's definitely good to move and fight on. Naruto commented as he pulled his pants up and headed for the entry to the cave. He stopped when he saw one of their traps that had clearly been disabled. Someone had been trying to get in but had given up for some reason, maybe because Naruto was waking up when they were coming in. He wasn't certain but after relieving himself he returned to the cave with a much more serious expression than he'd had before. Katniss' own soft smile fell away at the sight and she moved to grab her bow. Relax, nobody is here now, but they were while we were sleeping. Got through most of the traps without getting caught and disabled them. Naruto explained. We should pack up and get nomadic. Harder for the others to pin us down that way. Katniss pointed out. Hold on. We need to think about this for a second. We know it wasn't Thresh. He knows the path to here. The new trap I set on it wasn't touched so it wasn't him. Naruto explained. And if it was the careers why would they stop if they pretty much got through to us while we were defenseless? They wouldn't stop until they slit our throats. Katniss added in. That only leaves one tribute. Katniss stared at him before nodding. What are you thinking? 
that we need to move but we don't really need to worry about her ambushing us. From what you told me about the times you have seen her and the fact that she booked it when I started to wake up, she is just a thief, not a fighter. So we just head out and try to find the careers or what? Katniss asked. Actually, you can track right? Naruto asked. I'm alright. Better than you. She said with a smirk. That's fair. He said with a chuckle before angling his head toward the path their nighttime visitor has used. You want me to track down Foxface? She asked, surprised. It's the final days of the games. Maybe final hours. We can't be merciful. If we stay ruthless, cold, well we could go home together. He said while not looking back toward her. She's hardly a threat to us. Katniss weakly commented. You're right but if we want to go home we have to play the game, Katniss. Naruto pointed out. The girl was clearly displeased by the idea of hunting one of their fellow tributes down but he had a point. They couldn't go home as long as the other girl was alive. Follow me. She said. Lead the way, I can forage as you track as well. Naruto said. A few hours later and the pair had quietly taken a break to eat, Katniss slipped up to lean against Naruto. At first he had thought it was merely a show of affection but as she leaned up to kiss his cheek she briefly whispered into his ear. She's following us. I think we are near her camp. She's been leading us in a circle to try and keep an eye on our moves and lose us at the same time. She said before pressing her lips to his cheek. Naruto plastered a smile on his face as he pulled their last ration bars out and shared them before setting a small cloth filled with berries to the side. I foraged some berries for dessert. He chuckled before pulling the same tactic Katniss had and leaned into her ear while kissing her cheek. Go use the bathroom and make sure it's in her direction. I'll set a trap and we will leave the berries as bait. She nodded slightly before finishing her bit of food and making a small show of heading to pee. She made sure to walk directly toward Foxface's hidden position forcing the other girl back and allowing Naruto a short window to work. He didn't waste it as he crudely rigged up a trap that would stable its prey with a sharpened stick. Thankfully he already had a handful of such stakes he had made for general use in his pack. Otherwise he would never have had enough time. When Katniss returned they both headed out, leaving the berries as if forgotten. Just as planned. Once Katniss was pretty sure they weren't being followed anymore they both circled back around to find the trap had been disabled and the berries were gone. Shit. I can track her again. Katniss said. No need. Naruto said blankly. What do you mean? I mean the trap wasn't the real trap. These are the same kind of berries that were in the little pouch she took. Naruto said as he tossed her another smaller pouch of berries. Katniss unraveled the bag and was shocked by its contents. Nightlock, extremely poisonous if ingested. She looked back at Naruto who nodded before taking the berries back and tightly wrapping them up. After all, the sudden sound of a cannon marking the death of a tribute made it clear that a bit of poison could come in very handy. We should find somewhere to get a vantage point. Might be able to plan a bit better that way. Katniss commented. You lead, I'll follow. Naruto said with a smile. As they hiked through the forest the artificial sun began to set sooner than it normally should. It wasn't the only sharp change either. Temperatures dropped sharply and both Naruto and Katniss could suddenly see their breath misting in the air. So the beginning of the end then? Naruto asked no one. As if to respond an unnatural howl echoed over the arena followed by another and another till over a dozen monstrous howls called out together. That's not good. Katniss shuddered both at the sound and the temperature drop. Our best bet is to continue forward. We'll get a vantage point and figure out the best course of action from there. Naruto said. Right, let's go. She replied. As they traveled through the woods the pair of tributes couldn't help but notice the stalking presences just out of sight. Every now and then they caught a glimpse of the bestial forms that seemed to be trailing them. 
They were always there, just in the periphery of the two teens' vision. Hunting them. Naruto had at first thought they were wolves but they were too large to be a normal wolf. They varied in size but the smallest was still taller than Naruto's waist when on all fours. It took all they had to not break out into a run as they neared the hill that rose up from the wood surrounding it. Thankfully it would also provide some protection as it had a sheer cliff and the river on two of the sides. They were not the only ones to think so too as the large form of Thresh stood ahead of them staring at them as they approached. There's some after you too, huh? He said grimly as he turned and moved away from one of the dog-like monsters. Its face sported a deep cut and it was missing an eye. Clearly Thresh had already had his own run in with it. Mutts. Just like the war stories, the capital made mutations to wreck everything. Naruto growled. If they were just supposed to attack us, they would. The game makers are hurting the remaining tributes together. Katniss said as she kept her bow ready for one of the monsters to grow too bold. Naruto kept most of his attention on Thresh. There was no alliance there anymore. They could very well get stabbed in the back if they tried to work with him against the mutts. Then again things were not looking good. As far as they knew the careers weren't facing the pack like they were. This hill isn't gonna keep them at bay for long. We need something to climb up. Thresh said. He left out the obvious solution being to end the games as quickly as possible by wiping out the competition. We'll never make it all the way to the cliff area. Even if we did, the game makers won't let us get that far away from the center of the arena. Naruto said as he watched the beasts slowly begin to emerge from the brush. They were wrong. That was the best way to describe them. Wrong. They were canine in most of their appearance though bulging with muscle and with paws and claws that looked more at home on a lion. What's more their faces had a distinctly human touch that made Naruto uncomfortable just looking at them. Wait. The center of the arena. That must be where the game makers want to punch us toward. Katniss said as she pointed out toward the silhouette of the cornucopia at the central plane of the arena. So they are pushing the other two there as well. We dash, Naruto began to formulate a plane only to be interrupted as the mutts had grown impatient and begun their assault. They let loose a grotesque sound somewhere between a snarl and a scream and hurled themselves from the tree lean up the slope of the hill toward the three waiting tributes. Katniss was the first to react as she put an arrow into the leading creature. It stumbled momentarily before yelping and snatching up the arrow in its mouth and snapping its shaft with ease. The entire process took a single moment before it had rejoined the others in their charge. The archer didn't hold back and let loose another arrow that struck the next animal in its throat. It attempted to make some sound but simply gurgled as it tripped and rolled to a standstill quickly breathing its last breath as the arrow had lodged itself in its airway. The others paid it no mind and continued their charge quickly shortening the distance between themselves and the tributes. Use the river. Thresh bellowed as he lead them to the edge and jumped over to escape the advancing monsters. Come on. Naruto shouted as he grabbed Katniss and practically hauled her over the side with him. The fall was short and the water was even colder than they had expected. The temperatures had evidently continued to drop and by now the water felt as though the three tributes had dumped themselves into an ice bath. All three broke the surface as the slow-moving water began taking them away from the hill back toward the center of the arena. They turned to look at the hill they had just escaped as the ten monsters stood watching them before turning around and bolting toward some other destination. We'll be seeing them a dash, Naruto began only to stare wide-eyed as the mutts had returned at full speed and hurled themselves over the edge into the river after their prey. It only grew worse as it became clear the beasts had no sense of self-preservation and an abnormal skill at swimming. Swim. Thresh shouted causing the teens to all began struggling through the waters away from their pursuers. Despite all of them being above average athletically the animals closed in on them and things grew ever more desperate. A sliver of hope remained though. The bank nearest the cornucopia neared and if they could get to it they still had a chance of making it to the cornucopia. 
Thresh was the first onshore followed by Naruto and finally Katniss as Naruto pulled her from the current and they waded ashore as quickly as possible. We have to hurry, I guess our alliance is temporarily ba- Thresh began to say reaching out to help them only to scream in pain as a knife suddenly planted itself in his back. He fell to his knees and tried to reach for the blade but it was in a hard to reach spot. Naruto and Katniss glared up at Clove as she and Kato began to draw near only to freeze at the sight of the mutts in the water. More of them, get to the cornucopia. We can just wait for the end of the games. Kato said as he and Clove turned and bolted for the cornucopia. Shit, Katniss help me get him up we gotta move. Naruto said as he put arm around his friend. He stopped his efforts as he realized Katniss wasn't helping him. Katniss. He said with a sterner tone but his eyes were more begging than demanding. He's from Eleven, Naruto. We can't help him. She said while averting her eyes. Wh- dash, we can cross that bridge later. We can't leave him to get eaten by those things. Naruto growled. Stop. She's right. Thresh said softly. Naruto turned his eyes to the other boy. The resigned and determined look on his face caught Naruto off guard. You would never make it to the end with me dragging you down. Kato and Clove are both there waiting for you. Thresh said as he grimaced from the pain of the blade in his back. I can't leave you to be ripped apart by those things, anything else but that. Naruto practically whispered. Thresh was his friend. He couldn't deny that. There was no way he would leave him to a death like that. It would be cruel. You will. I'll buy you two a minute at most so make it count. The older boy said as he gently pushed Naruto away. No, I dash, he began to argue. I couldn't save Ru. I can give you a chance to save yourself though, my friend. Thresh said before her slowly stood and prepared himself for the encroaching animals. Naruto we have to go. They'll overrun him in no time. We have to go. Katniss practically begged as she pulled at his wrist. The blonde nodded weakly and followed her as they both raced toward the cornucopia and a final showdown with the tributes of District 2. Already they could see the other tributes scaling the metallic shell themselves taking the high ground. Katniss didn't miss a beat as she stopped notched an arrow and took a shot at the pair. She had hoped to put it through the back of Clove's skull but missed and instead pierced her hand with the arrow causing her to scream and fall from Kato's shoulders as he boosted her up toward the top of the structure. It gave them a little bit of time, but not much. As they ran they heard the feral howls and roars of the creatures seem to multiply before Thresh screamed in pain and the howls turned to elated yips and barks followed by a single cannon shot. Naruto ignored it as they closed in on the cornucopia. Kato hurled Clove up onto the roof of the structure before he began scaling it himself. Naruto didn't plan to let them group back up though. Putting on an extra burst of speed fueled almost solely from his intent to kill Kato. Naruto closed the gap and tackled his fellow blonde to the ground before they both began a vicious struggle to kill one another. With a surprise kick to the chest though, Kato was sent sprawling, letting Naruto to drop to a knee just in time for his own partner to use him as a springboard and join Clove on the roof of the cornucopia. Immediately both District 2 tributes engaged their counterparts and the fights turned brutal and dirty from the outset. Katniss and Clove dove after one another but the true show was the fight between Naruto and Kato, the long-awaited rematch between the two most dangerous males in this year's games. They charged one another across the grass just past the cornucopia despite the pack of beasts closing in. Luckily for them the mutts were made to keep their distance, circling the cornucopia as Naruto and Kato battled one another. Naruto slid beneath the taller boy's guard but as he drug his knife across the other boy's chest it didn't cut into his flesh. Instead it tore through his shirt before sparking against the flexible but extremely durable shirt of armor beneath. It didn't fit perfectly, clearly meant for the now dead District 1 tribute, but it still provided Kato some protection that Naruto simply lacked. It also allowed Kato the chance to respond to Naruto's attack faster than he normally would have, 
being as he hadn't needed to avoid the blow. He brought his sword down in a plunging motion but Naruto lunged back out of the way. Sadly the momentum had decidedly shifted into Kato's favor as he smoothly transferred his attack into a wide slash that sent Naruto stumbling as he struggled to avoid it as well. Even though he managed to get some distance from Kato, Naruto had to roll back toward his opponent to avoid the waiting mutts still circling them. It seemed the game makers were very intent on an epic finale. While Naruto did his best to avoid the larger boy's blade, on the roof of the cornucopia Katniss and Clove rolled over one another in a desperate attempt to get a good position to kill the other. They had already both broken each other's noses and Katniss could feel her left eye throbbing and starting to swell from the blows both rained down on each other's face. Both had already disarmed one another. Not that Katniss would have much use of her bow in this grappling match. Slowly the fact that Katniss was slightly larger and more muscular began to give her the advantage as she began to pin the smaller girl beneath her. Straddling her chest with one arm pinched beneath her knee against the metal of the cornucopia, Katniss wrapped her hands around the other girl's throat and squeezed as she pressed down with as much of her weight as she could bring to bear without letting Clove loose from the waist. Clove struggled beneath her with the savagery only someone on the brink of death could. Even as her life was literally choked out of her, she fought on. She managed to pull her pinned hand free, though it took breaking two of her fingers to do it. Clove barely felt that in her frantic state as her vision grew blurry and darker. She clawed at Katniss' hands and then at her face. The District 12 tribute screamed as Clove's fingernails dug into her cheeks and raked jagged bloody lines down her face, narrowly missing her eyes and leaving bloody tears down her face. Slowly though the fight left her. Her panicked clawing and swinging of her hands died down. It became weaker and weaker. And tears obscured what little vision she still had as her complexion turned red then purple then slowly an inhuman looking blue. Katniss felt her own tears building up as the girl in her grip tried silently to beg for mercy. They stung the wounds on her face as they ran down, but she didn't release her grip. Instead she pressed even harder. The girl underneath her couldn't fight back now so she didn't need to keep her pinned down any longer. So she pushed her thumbs into the hollow of Clove's throat and put all her weight behind it as her arms shook from the strain of the pressure she applied. She only let up once the cannon had sounded and she slid off of the body of her former opponent before hearing the continued struggle of Naruto and Kato down below. Racing to grab her bow and an arrow she paused briefly at the sight below her. Naruto was no longer on the defensive but a thin bloody line crossed his chest where the very tip of Kato's blade had bit into his skin. He had disarmed the other boy, but unfortunately neither now had a weapon and they were fist fighting one another similar to how she and Clove had moments earlier. Unlike she and Clove though, Kato and Naruto were both much more familiar with a fist fight. They looked almost like boxers as they circled one another and planted blows wherever they could find a gap in the other's guard. They were both bloodied and exhausted but determined to defeat the other. Katniss felt perfectly happy to intervene. She drew back her bowstring and let a shot loose only to stare in shock as the arrow glanced harmlessly off of Kato's back without issue. He has armor of some kind. Naruto barked out before lunging forward to grab hold of Kato and begin planting punches to his face. Kato didn't miss his chance to do the same and soon both boys stood locked together with one arm each while their free arms pummeled one another, further breaking their faces and splattering blood across the grass around them. Katniss picked up another arrow and let it loose with a marksmanship none of the others in the games could have competed with. It found its place in Kato's arm that was locked onto Naruto's shoulder, just below the elbow. The boy howled as he managed to break free of Naruto and backpedal while clutching at his arm. Naruto didn't give him a moment of respite though as he snatched up the first arrow Katniss had shot and charged his enemy. Kato wasn't ready for the attack and Naruto tackled him to the ground just within the invisible perimeter that the game makers were keeping the mutts behind. The two boys struggled as Kato tried to keep Naruto from driving the arrow down into his throat. Slowly though it was clear Naruto was winning out in their bout of strength and endurance. I volunteered for this. 
I can't believe I volunteered for dash, Cato began to whimper only to be silenced as the arrowhead stabbed into his throat and his words were replaced with blood-filled gurgling. Naruto didn't say anything as he stared back into the blue eyes that looked back at him. The two of them could almost have looked like brothers. They were both fighters and tough bastards. In the end though Naruto could see his own fear at the thought of death reflected in the other boy's eyes and he couldn't help but think about how easily he could be the one quickly dying. Thankfully the mutts withdrew as another cannon sound echoed across the arena and slowly the sun began to rise once more as it was a beautiful morning. As if to counter the rising sun, Naruto collapsed and laid on the blood-splattered grass as he gasped for breath and tried to take a moment to recuperate. He had expected the fight with Kato to be even more difficult than it had but as he lay there Katniss joined him and he could only nod thanks toward her. She had made the fight much easier on him than he had been prepared for. The pair sat silently on the grass as the sun quickly rose and light filtered across the field. They didn't even need to put the thought of Kato and Clove's corpses so close to themselves out of their mind. After all, they won. It was over. Finally. What's more, they would both be going home. As if the capital could simply leave it at that. Attention, attention tributes. The voice broke out across the arena. Katniss and Naruto were on their feet instantly, Naruto quickly reclaiming a knife from the grass and Katniss notching an arrow. The pair of them were anxious and ready for some last-minute attack from the mutts or some other kind of attack just not for the next words of the announcer. There has been a slight rule change. The previous revision, allowing for two victors from the same district has been, revoked. Naruto and Katniss both froze at those words. A cold feeling ran through them as they slowly turned to lock eyes with one another. Only one victor may be crowned. Good luck, and may the odds be ever in your favor. The pair continued to stare at one another until in a burst of action Naruto wrenched the bow from Katniss' hands and pressed his knife against her throat. The two stared at one another while Naruto's breath became increasingly ragged and his eyes became ever more dilated. He didn't move though. Couldn't. Instead his hands began to slowly shake until he lowered the blade and instead pressed the handle into her palm before leaning forward and kissing her. Slowly he stepped back and turned away from her letting his hands fall to his sides and waiting for her to kill him. She couldn't either though. Even as she stood there with the knife in her hand she couldn't. Naruto slowly lost his patience with her as she continued to stand there. You have people at home Katniss. Think of them. You promised your sister, right? Naruto asked as he turned to look at her once again. The girl just continued to stare at him. Do it. I won't kill myself, so do it. He urged her on. Trying to ignore the tears mixing with the fresh blood on her cheeks. You won't do it yourself? She asked quietly. Naruto felt himself shiver at the thought. He couldn't though. As much as he would like to bring that much more of the burden off of her shoulders, he couldn't kill himself. What if we did it together? She continued. He stared at her now, more in confusion than grim acceptance. Slowly she stepped over to him and her arms slid up around his side. For a brief moment he thought she was going to give him one last embrace before planting the blade in the base of his head like he had done to show mercy to others over their time in the arena. Instead she retrieved the small bundle of berries and held them up between them. No Victor, just you and me together. Katniss said with a water smile. Together, are you sure? He asked her, his jaw set as he tried to fight back his own tears of frustration and fear of the inevitable oncoming death, more than I thought I would be. She said before leaning forward to catch him in another kiss. Much deeper and longing than the one he had given her a moment before. Still slowly they separated and divided up the berries into their hands. A single mouthful was more than enough to kill them. Before they could lift them to their mouths though the voice of the lead game maker broke out over the arena. Stop. Stop. A few muffled sounds of the speaker being adjusted created a brief pause before the Seneca crane began speaking once again. Ladies and gentlemen, 
may I present the winners of the 74th Annual Hunger Games. With that silence returned for a moment as the pair of tributes allowed the berries to roll free from their hands. Another moment later and they practically collapsed into one another holding each other tight as they could, ignoring the multitude of injuries they both wore and trying not to break down as relief suddenly swept through their beings. It really was over now. Finally over for both of them. They had won. Waking up in a new place with no knowledge of how you got there and no real memory of falling asleep was a disquieting feeling. Waking up on a cold metal slab in a room smelling of antiseptic was more terrifying than simply disquieting. Racking his brain for the last memory he had, he recalled the announcement of his and Katniss victory. Then, a hovercraft lowering toward them. That was it. He knew he was probably back in the capital but his mind was first and foremost centered on his fellow victor. They had both been about to end their lives moments before the end. Katniss. He attempted to call out and sit up. His voice came out more like a croak and his head swam as he suddenly shot up. Nausea swept over him and he nearly collapsed back onto the steel bed. He forced himself forward though nearly getting to his feet before a pair of hands settled onto his shoulders to keep him in place. Slow down, your partner is fine. You're both alive and well. A comforting voice calmed him down. A familiar one. Portia? He asked slowly, turning his head to look at the woman beside him. The capital woman smiled and gently ran a hand through his hair almost like a mother would her child. You made it. I'm glad. She said simply before helping him into a more comfortable sitting position. Heh, I guess I am too. Naruto replied, still a bit out of it. So, I imagine you have some questions? Normally your mentor would handle this but with two victors, while well he is meeting with Katniss at the moment. Portia explained. That's fine I prefer you to be here anyway. Well, then I guess I will explain things as best as I can. You were tranquilized by a colorless odorless gas released across the arena once you and Katniss were declared victor. It only lasts a few short moments but long enough for the reclamation team to pick both of you up and sedate further. It's all standard procedure, mostly in case the victor is injured or in a sort of crazed state. They then bring you here to clean up and fix you up. Portia explained. Here, as in the capital? He asked. Exactly. You'll be glad to know that they mended your injuries easily enough and even removed any scars. Anything short of a severed limb is evidently no problem for these surgeons. Portia pointed out as Naruto checked ere his wounds had once been. There was a tiny discoloration if he squinted but it was more like he had gotten a tan with something pressed against his skin than a scar. He quickly moved all his parts and prodded at the spots where bloody holes had once decorated his skin. They also remove any sort of parasite or bacterial infection that might cause you problems. You might be a bit uncomfortable with the amount that they purged from you. I know I was when they told me. Right. That's good I guess. Naruto replied squirming a little bit at the thought of parasites writhing inside him. I'm kidding, Naruto mostly. Portia said with a smile. Not exactly funny. Depends on the point of view, wouldn't you say? Naruto rolled his eyes as Portia giggled. She was enjoying this little session of back and forth. He just wanted to get on with an explanation of what was going to happen now. She took mercy on him and returned to explaining things. Sadly winning the games is always just the first step. Now you have to smile and sing whatever tune the president wants you to sing. Something to keep the people of Paynham happy and obedient. Either that or he will make things very difficult for you. She pointed out. Oh, will he? Naruto bit out sarcastically. Yes. You might think the worst is that you could die but I know you are smarter than that if you stop to think. That's just you. Snow would happily punish Katniss as a means to keep you under control as well and vice versa. Portia said seriously. Katniss. Naruto muttered. That's another thing. Everyone in the country has an opinion regarding you too. 
Some think you both are excellent at playing the masses and acting. They believe everything you two did was a way to manipulate things into your favor, including your little relationship or whatever you are going to call it. Others believe you two are the most romantic thing to ever happen. Of course. What do you think? I think you both are idiots who don't know the first thing about loving someone but you also aren't clever enough or honestly patient enough to try and pull something over on the capital. What do you think about yourself and Katniss? Portia said as she gave him a searching look. Naruto opened his mouth to speak but closed it again. Now that the games were over, he was unsure. Would she feel the same way she had in their moments together? Did he even feel the same without death hanging over him? Heh, I expected that would be about the sum of it. Portia said as he remained quiet. What now? He asked her. Now, you need to prepare. I've been meeting with Sina all morning to figure out the best look for the both of you. You will need to sell your relationship with Katniss Naruto. From the rumors I'm hearing, the president is leaning toward thinking you and Katniss are trying to humiliate his regime with everything you two have done. Especially you. After all, you have made it clear how much you despise the capital. It's time you go by the script. Portia warned. That's dash, Naruto began. Exactly what we're all going to do. Thank you Portia. Haymitch said as he entered with Katniss following close behind. Naruto locked his eyes onto his fellow tribute the moment she entered, just as she did with him. Both of the older figures in the room noticed and gave a quiet goodbye for the moment. They would see them again shortly to further impress on them the need to play ball now. The teens stared at each other for a moment. Without the games hanging over them all the awkwardness both felt in regards to such, emotions. Katniss. He said awkwardly only for the girl to move forward and tightly wrap him in a hug. One that he happily returned. It was a bit uncomfortable since both were in backless hospital gowns and nothing else, but after the events in the arena it didn't bother them all that much. When I woke up I thought that something had happened. She muttered into his ear. I did too. We're both safe though. We won. We're going home together. He said as he gently rubbed her back. Home. It's only been a few weeks but it's like we've been gone for years. She whispered. Naruto nodded his head against hers but remained quiet as they simply held each other and let the reality of their survival sink in once again. He couldn't put it into words properly, but holding her here like this was nice. It felt right and made him feel better than he had since waking up outside of the arena. As they slowly broke their embrace, Katniss joined him in sitting on the edge of the metal bed. She leaned against him and they waited for the others to return. It's not over. Not really. He finally said into the silence. We'll handle it. We're going home. Katniss insisted. Portia is right. This is all just the beginning. He mumbled out. Stop. Katniss said as she felt the stress begin to seize hold over her partner. We're together. We will be fine together and we'll go home together. She said sincerely. The building storm in his head quailed at her words and the cool hands that took hold of either side of his face. She locked eyes with him again before planting her lips on his own surprising him. He returned the gesture but it was a quick innocent thing. I had to check. She said simply getting a nod from Naruto. Before they could say anything else though a, a sharp knock at the door was followed by Haymitch, Sina, Portia and all their assistants bustling into the room. Effie glided in after them, broadly smiling at both Naruto and Katniss. It seemed far more natural than most that she wore though. It's time to get you both ready. You have an interview with Caesar Flickerman tonight so we need to get you ready for that. Effie chirped like a happy bird. Naruto nearly asked what she was so pleased about before he realized that she was genuinely happy that both he and Katniss had beaten the system. It warmed him to the capital woman a bit. Honestly he was warming up a bit to several people from the capital lately. Not most of them but at least those in this room. 
Katniss was escorted out of the room by Sina and his half of the group. Effie trailing behind them seemingly intent on chattering up her favorite of the two tributes. Hey Mitch hung back at the door for a moment before smiling softly at Naruto and shooting him a small nod. We'll talk about tactics and topics before the interview. Until then you'll be in Portia's capable hands. He said before stepping out into the hallway. Naruto sighed at the sight of the many articles of clothing and various other items they planned to work him over with. All right. Time to get to work. Naruto, drop the gown if you would. Portia commanded rather than ask. He frowned a bit at the lack of privacy but by now it wasn't even in the top hundred things on his mind. Tugging a clasp he let the thin fabric fall and mostly withheld a flinch as the assistants immediately moved in to work. He would never be able to get used to this kind of thing. Especially with Portia looking so amused at his facial expressions. The show host dazzled the audience with his impossibly bright smile as he welcomed them all to his program. Naruto and Katniss stood just off stage and behind a thin decorative piece awaiting the signal to step out. Just as Haymitch and Effie had insisted, the tributes held one another's hand tightly. Katniss appreciated the grip at the moment. Earlier when Naruto had begun to spiral into a small panic she had kept him grounded. Now at the near-deafening roar of the crowd just beyond the stage and the brutal clips playing overheard from the games, she was beginning to lose herself. Naruto's warm hand tightened around hers and he locked his eyes with hers until she could properly focus her attention again. Haymitch had warned them both about moments like that, where their present might begin to fade away. He said that with luck it would be better by the time they returned home. Of course neither believed him. He hadn't really tried to convince them either. Even if the doctors of the capital could clear away the physical damage both Naruto and Katniss could feel every little difference that they held with their old selves. Now let us welcome onto the stage our two victors. Caesar roared out, getting a monstrous round of applause and cheering from the audience. The pair stepped out around the decorations causing the applause to crescendo as the capital citizens lost themselves in the moment. Caesar shook Naruto's free hand and kissed the back of Katniss's before all three of them took their seats. The interview itself dragged on in Katniss's mind. Every question reminded them of the most painful and difficult moments in the games. Thankfully someone seemed to have told Caesar to avoid any mention of Rue or Thresh. She wasn't sure she could have kept up the smiling facade if he had. When they announced that you could both become victors, how did that make you feel? Caesar asked with his trademark smile on full blast. Naruto glanced toward Katniss. She could practically hear the thought in his head. The fact the capital had tried to revoke that at the end was running through his head but he bit his tongue as she squeezed his hand. It was a dream come true. It gave me us, both of us, hope. I don't want to imagine what either of us would have done if we were alone. She said honestly. Caesar glanced at the crowd as Naruto and Katniss shared a brief look. What about you Naruto? Caesar asked, what can I say really? I'm no actor, I just say what I think. Naruto began before smiling. I'm not the brightest either but I can feel a, I can feel like I can take on the world together. Katniss squeezed his hand, warning him again. I bet you do. Ladies and gentlemen, the star-crossed lovers of District 12, your victors of the 74th annual Hunger Games. Immediately after the interviews they were both carted away to the massive avenue that they had once ridden chariots down. It seemed so long ago to both of them. This time they stood up behind President Snow as he picked up their victors' crowns and moved toward them, first Katniss. Snow gently placed her crown on her head. It almost looked like a golden saw blade in design. He brushed her hair back over her shoulder to reveal the mocking jay pin she had received from Madge Undersea before leaving for the capital. Ah, your tribute token, well your victor's token now I suppose. Snow commented. A mocking jay. She replied quietly. Snow carried an aura about him. One that put her teeth on edge. I know very well what it is. He replied, eyes glinting darkly. 
Katniss remained silent at that. She knew the Mockingjay was a reminder both of the rebellion and the capital's failures at the time. One they had a hard time sweeping under the rug like most others. Mockingjay could survive in nearly every environment on the continent after all. The saying that Mockingjays were as common as rocks and as durable as them had plenty of truth after all. Their mere existence was a reminder of the capital's near capitulation to the districts during the dark days. It is a very beautiful piece. Snow complimented with a smile that reminded her of a wolf baring its teeth. Thank you. She simply replied. The president moved on to Naruto. His crown resembled a saw blade just as Katniss did. However when Snow placed it down on his head the old man pressed it a bit further causing the sharp prongs to dig into his head ever so slightly. Congratulations. Enjoy the weight of your victory, young man. He said simply before stepping away. Naruto remained silent but glared daggers at the back of the man. The one who was in charge, kept all of Panem under his thumb. Allowed the disgusting disparity and abuse to perpetuate. Thankfully they didn't have to stand there much longer before they were led off of the stage area and finally taken back to their quarters to get clean. Naruto frowned at the tiny spots of blood along the crown he had been given. A couple from his own head, but a couple from Snow pressing his hands onto the upper portion to hurt Naruto with it too. Cut yourself too you stupid bastard. Naruto smirked as he tossed the crown into a bag of clothes returning with him home to District 12. Before long both he and Katniss were rejoining Haymitch in the common area of their temporary apartment. All their things packed away and being loaded on the train. They would have one final triumphant ride down the avenue of tributes and out through the streets to the train station. Hold on a second you two. Haymitch said, stopping them from heading for the doors. What's wrong? Naruto asked. He wanted to get the procession over with and back to District 12 as soon as possible. He needed some serious rest after everything. He didn't just mean the games either. I just wanted a moment with both of you before we start the trip back. Hey Mitch said as he pulled out a flask tucked away on his person and grabbed three small cups from one of the nearby sets of glasses. To the victors, and the fallen. Hey Mitch said seriously as he poured three shots of the whiskey he had brought with him from back in District 12. It came along with a rather strong scent. Katniss chuckled as she picked up her glass. She leaned forward to squeeze their mentor with a hug. The man was very different from when they were first coming to the capital. Naruto picked up his own glass before smiling as well. To the districts, and bending the rules. He tipped his glass toward Haymitch at that. Portia and Sina had both told them what Haymitch had done with Crane to get them through the games. All three knew that the undiagnosed heart issue that had claimed the game maker's life was a load of crap. It also served as a warning for what President Snow might do to them should he feel too threatened by them. The three of them knocked back the drunk with varying expressions of discomfort or outright disgust. Katniss coughed roughly while Naruto blew out a breath like it was fire. Their mentor watched on amused, and for the first time in a long time really happy. Let's get this shit show over with and go home. Hey Mitch said as he clapped a hand on the shoulders of both tributes before ushering them toward the elevator. The triumph ride to the train station seemed fast. Not that any of the three District 12 citizens were complaining. The screaming crowds were easier to ignore now. Katniss smiled faintly and occasionally waved to small children but Naruto didn't even look their way. The train was even more gaudy and sickeningly stuffed with rich treats and ornaments. Effie said nothing about it this time instead just suggesting some of the better tasting foods or drinks and giving them both warm smiles the whole time. They were to enjoy their spoils as victors. Neither was all that interested in actually enjoying much of the gifts. Rather they had begun to spend more and more time sitting together in total silence and, waiting. It was becoming hard for either of them to feel comfortable away from each other now. A continuous worry not only about themselves but the other hung over them. It hadn't really started affecting them too terribly till they boarded the train. 
They both had decided to get some rest over the trip. It never came. Instead they kept finding excuses to slip out of bed and check on one another. Haymitch had said nothing and made sure Effie had likewise remained silent on the subject. They had nothing to offer the teens in regards to feeling, safe again. As far as Haymitch was concerned, having one another was better than just having a bottle to rely on. At least the train ride was short. Although the fact that it was coming to an end did slip that tiny sliver of worry into both Victor's heads. What exactly would happen when they got home? We'll be living in the Victor village. Naruto commented as they both picked at the breakfast spread. Yeah. Houses big enough to fit five families each. What are you even going to do with all that space? Katniss asked him with a chuckle. Naruto made a face that caused her to laugh more. I suppose someone might get angry if I just let people stay as guests. Definitely. She agreed. Could still have the occasional party. And invite who? My neighbors Katniss and Haymitch? They're okay, I suppose, not much for party people. He joked. I take offense to that. I will have you know I am the life of the party. Haymitch chimed in before downing some of his breakfast. Naruto rolled his eyes while Katniss tried to cover a snort at the faux haughty tone the mentor was using. You live in one of those castles. What is it like in a house like that? Katniss asked. Haymitch's smile faded rapidly before he left out a sigh. Empty? Katniss stiffened at the tone the man used. He sounded awfully tired for a moment before going back to his meal. You'll have your mom and Prim with you though. Naruto reassured her. Katniss smiled at that before she realized that Naruto's house would be just as empty as Haymitch's. She let the topic drop as it was announced they were nearing the District 12 stop. Both were anxious in the moments leading up the train sliding to a complete stop at the station. The sound of the people of District 12 cheering for them almost reminded them of all the applause they received back in the capital but it had a different source. Where those people had roared and laughed at the butchery that Naruto and Katniss would either be subject to or subject others to, here they cheered for the simple fact that their own people were returning home. Healthy and alive and surprisingly for the entire nation together. As the door slid open and they stepped out onto the platform they both smiled and waved at the people gathered. Not like they had at times for the capital. No this was all genuine. Even Naruto smiled at the familiar sight of the sagging buildings and thick woods just out past the edges of town. Katniss caught sight of her mother and sister. Her sister sat on the shoulders of Gale as he too smiled at her. She felt her smile drop ever so slightly for a moment before returning in full force at the excited looks of her three family members. Come along. I'm told that someone hired some folks to move your things to your new houses. We are going to meet with the mayor then show you to your new homes. Effie said as they began moving as a group to a waiting car nearby. Katniss sent a final wave toward her family before she and Naruto followed after Effie. Naruto leaned into her ear as they walked. So, do you think your mom and sister will like me? He asked. Hmm, work hard to impress them and maybe. Katniss replied with a grin while squeezing his hand. The car ride was short, though it would have been considerably shorter if the narrow roads of District 12 hadn't been packed with celebratory citizens. It was heartwarming. Neither Naruto nor Katniss were so foolish as to believe it was all for them. Truthfully the people were happy both survived, if only because such a thing had never happened and felt a bit like they were sticking it to the capital. That was far from the main reason though. When a district claimed a victor at the annual games, they received a huge surplus of supplies, including massive shipments of food. Normally this went to places like District 1 or District 2. Places closer to the capital where starvation was among the most rare methods of death. Here in District 12, Naruto and Katniss had just saved hundreds of lives by simply saving their own. What was more, as a way to show their commitment to their word and possibly distract from the attempt to renege on the rule change at the end of the games, the supply delivery had been doubled. At least it would have been, 
As much as the people of District 12 could use the food, they weren't the only ones. The victor shipments were the victors to do with what they pleased. Katniss ensured hers went to 12, but with that taken care of, Naruto instead split his among the other outlying districts. Something that had Hamich conflicted. After all, Snow already saw the teens as the biggest threat to stability in Paynham in decades. Acts like this only solidified that view and Hamich knew it. So did Naruto but he didn't care. Thresh's friends and family deserved it, that's why he made sure District 11 got a little extra. Luckily his actions had made him even more into a sweetheart with the general populace of the capital. It also wasn't unprecedented. At times some victors had been moved by a fellow tribute in the games and given some of their spoils away. Nothing ever to this scale however. They're a lot bigger up close. Katniss muttered as the vehicle pulled up in front of the victors' houses. Naruto turned his mind away from the worrisome thoughts of provoking President Snow and to what was in front of him. Katniss was right. The mansions they were moving into really were larger in person than seen at a distance. Just like everything else, the capital made sure their decadence was felt. Here. Your keys have the house number printed on them. I would hang around but I am due for a bath and a very long nap. Try to keep any festivities down for my sake would you? Hey Mitch said as he handed both Naruto and Katniss a key. Effie seemed to roll her eyes before turning to the pair of teens. Katniss, your mother and sister are being collected and brought here in another car. Your kitchens are fully stocked, and I'll show you how to make requests to get it all refilled later. We'll also talk about your next steps later. For now I need to make sure Hamich doesn't drown. I would hate to be the first escort to see both of her tributes win only for the man-child in her party to die in the bath. The teens watched the woman scurry after Hamich before sharing a look. You don't think? Naruto began to ask. Ugh, no. I don't want to imagine either of them like that. Katniss bit out causing him to raise his hands and nod wholeheartedly agreeing with her. The pair stood in silence staring at the looming houses ahead of them. Cold and pristine they felt out of place compared to the rest of their home. They also felt more like tombs waiting to swallow them up than new houses. Do, uh, you want to maybe come over and meet my mom and Prim a bit more officially? Katniss asked. Yeah, I guess if you want me to. Naruto nodded. Prim will like you. I think my mom will too. She always wanted me to, uh, get with a boy from the merchant side of the district. Katniss awkwardly claimed. Heh, not sure if I really qualify that much. I might live there but, you know. Naruto said, shifting uncomfortably. Let's explore a little. Katniss said thankfully, snapping the awkward air. Sounds good. He happily followed her. By the time that the rest of the Everdeen family arrived Naruto and Katniss had already poked through the first floor of her house. It was easily three times the size of Katniss' old house and that was just the first floor. The rest of the building along with the grounds out behind it were enormous compared to almost anything else in the district. Who needs the hob when we could just use your living room to fit the whole market? Naruto pointed out as they stepped out of the kitchen and back into the foyer as they heard the door open. I'm going to get lost in here. Make sure to come find me every now and then. Katniss joked, getting a chuckle and a sarcastic promise to do so. Katniss. A younger female voice called, causing both of them to turn their attention toward the two blondes standing just inside the front door. Naruto hung back as Katniss moved forward to wrap her baby sister into a bone-crushing embrace. He knew that the two were close, but seeing them reunited felt so right to him. He remained quiet and just awkwardly watched on as the girl's mother joined the hug and all three babbled happily in an unintelligible mix of words. You came back, just like you said. Prim said to Katniss as the three of them all calmed down. I did. I had help, but I promised so I came back. Katniss said as she pulled her sister in close to her once again. You did have help. 
her mother said standing as she turned to look at Naruto. The woman eyed him for a moment before stepping past her daughters and wrapping him in a snug embrace. Naruto tensed in the woman's arms while staring at Katniss who also seemed shocked. Her mother had moments that she was, well a mother, but at times she proved to be almost like she was slipping from the world. Spacing out. Forgetting things. She also more often than not seemed either weepy or stoic beyond what most would be capable of. Now though she was clinging to a near stranger. Holding him as if he was a long-lost relative. Thank you. She forced out as happy tears came to her eyes. Naruto could say nothing as he let his arms wrap around the woman. Like hugging Katniss it was a warm feeling. Not exactly the same, but it did feel good. Only made better when the two sisters joined them for a moment before they broke apart once again and the eldest of the group tried to regain her composure. Sorry, I just hoped for her to come back and you helped make that possible. I dash, she struggled to find words. I couldn't help myself. I think the only way we could have come back was together. Naruto said, trying to play it off a bit. Together? Prim asked suddenly. A cheeky look on her face. That's something we need to talk about too. The mother said gradually regaining her self-control. That's something for him to talk about with me. Katniss said sharply. The mother held a brief staring contest with her daughter before wilting. Prim however had no problem with making the meeting awkward as she started asking questions about whether or not they had been sneaking off into the woods before the reaping. Naruto stayed over at the Everdeen household for a couple more hours. Prim had eventually pulled her mother into teasing the two victors about their relationship, but thankfully the older woman could tell they were still a bit uncomfortable and new to the development between one another. She settled them all in for a meal and distracted them with topics mostly about the happenings in District 12 since their reaping. He was thankful for that. He didn't have the capacity to handle Primrose's teasing for hours on end, and despite growing up with her neither did Katniss. Eventually Naruto went home though. His house was almost a mirror image to that of Katniss. However as he opened the door and stepped inside the dimly lit foyer he couldn't stop the stab of dread in his heart. It was silent. Unbearably silent. Much like his house back in the merchant portion of the district had been. Only it lacked the sound of distant barking dogs. There were no hidden crickets chirping. The sound of wind didn't make thin wooden walls shift slightly and creak and moan. It was total and utter silence except for his own breath, his own footsteps, and his own loudening thoughts. He hated it already. Kareen had often wondered what it would be like to have a son. Never for long, never very deeply, but she had wondered. However she had always pictured a younger copy of her late husband. These days it felt like she had taken in a son that was almost nothing like her husband had been. Naruto was nothing like Philip had been. At least she didn't feel he was. Although she did have to admit that defiant, independent nature was definitely shared between them. Maybe that was what had drawn Katniss to him even after they were free of the games. It had drawn Kareen to Philip Everdeen. Then again, unlike her, Katniss was incredibly independent and defiant as well. Though neither Katniss or Naruto looked the part as they dozed quietly on the oversized couch in the new Everdeen living room. She moved forward and wrapped the blanket she had picked up around both of them. They looked too peaceful to be disturbed and sent to bed at the moment. Unfortunately as much as she didn't want to disturb them, the moment the blanket fell across their forms both teens snapped up ready to fight her. Mom? Katniss asked as she grabbed a hold of Naruto's wrist to calm him down. Sorry, I was just trying to wrap you both up. I didn't want you to get cold. Kareen replied as she held up the blanket once more. Ah, uh, sorry. Naruto said as he rubbed his tired eyes. Kareen frowned. Both teens had been affected terribly by the games. She knew to expect as much. Hey Mitch had stopped by to give her warning, not that she really needed it. No sane person came out of an experience like they had without some sort of issues. 
I should be getting back home anyway. Thanks for dinner again, Mrs. Everdeen. It was delicious. Naruto said as he stood. Katniss rose up with him and seemed unhappy that he was leaving for the night. Kareem didn't dare stick her nose into it. Katniss had reached a point to not really need her much anymore. She knew that, so she just hoped to keep her daughter close enough to be with her when she could. It was mostly prim, really. She said, turning her attention back to Naruto. All of you Everdeen girls are too humble. Naruto softly replied with a rare frail smile. Kareen smiled back. The boy had warmed up to their family almost as much as they had to him. He was rough around the edges but she had really started to get along with him. She just wished there was something more she could do for him, the smile he was giving her looked brittle as could be, and the rings under his eyes told her just how much sleep he had been getting in that big house of his across the road. You could stay the night here if you wanted. Katniss said. Apparently Corrine wasn't the only one that had noticed that the boy needed rest and that he wasn't getting it at home. Naruto looked like he might refuse. That simply wouldn't do. She's right. In fact why don't both of you just stretch out on the couch? I'll bring down a couple of pillows. She offered getting a small look of thanks from Katniss. Are you sure? Naruto asked. She smiled a bit brighter at that. The boy was all defiant and tough until Cantus or Prim asked him for something. She noticed similar reactions to her own requests as well. A people pleaser at heart despite everything. I insist. Now lay back down. I'll be back in a moment, just no funny business. A kiss I can stand but I'm far too young for grandchildren. She said causing both teens to blush and her daughter to glare. Katniss would have to deal with it. She might not feel comfortable telling the girl what to do anymore, but Corrine would always be her mother and that meant she had all the rights to tease her and her lover. Though she did hope that they hadn't gone quite that far yet. She hoped that like most of his looks and personality, Naruto was unlike Philip Everdeen had been at that age. Katniss groaned as her mother disappeared up the stairs searching for pillows. She had thought that embarrassment was more or less a thing of the past after her privacy had been all but terminated during the games. Instead it seemed her mother and sister had both found they could easily get under her skin. It wasn't much of a task with such an easy in as Naruto around. She pushed the annoyance at her mother and sister from her mind and turned her attention back onto Naruto. He looked exhausted. Not like back in the arena. There he had a certain alertness hanging about in his eyes. Now he looked like he was barely remaining on his feet. You heard her. Let's lay back down. She tugged at his wrist as she made her way toward the couch. Yeah. That sounds pretty nice actually. Naruto got out around a massive yawn. Katniss curled up in a spot that left plenty of room for him as well. That is as long as he was pressed up against her. If they were both laying on it then they had to share the space, and Katniss would inevitably be mostly laying on him rather than the couch itself. Hmm, I think this is nicer than my bed honestly. He muttered as he pulled the blanket over the top of both of them. Mine too. She said as she began a new round of yawns shared between the two of them. She smiled as she felt his hand briefly run through her hair and adjusted them both so that her head rested on the center of his chest. Neither said much after that. Their breathing easing the other into a sleep. Both back under before Kareen ever came back downstairs with the pillows. He cursed silently as he tried to once more thread the lace through the tiny hole he had punched into the leather. He hadn't had to work on such a thing in quite a while but his old pouch had needed replacing for some time and he really couldn't head out into the woods with his current setup. Not that he actually had to go into the woods for food anymore. More so he felt more comfortable there than here in this empty house. Peace of, come on please. He began to curse before begging the stiff leather to work properly. He could feel his body beginning to tense the more he sat here on the edge of his unused bed working. It had been a few weeks since they had settled in here at the Victor's village. Honestly most nights he stayed with Katniss and the Everdeens. 
a couple nights he had even stayed in Hamich's house after a round of drinks and pointless card games. There had even been a couple he had purposefully gotten too drunk to stumble back home and either slept it off in the garrison's drunk tank or in a ditch somewhere. The night spent here in his actual house could be counted on two hands, and the night spent sleeping in his bed on two fingers. Naruto hated this place. That was going to be a problem since he was a healthy young man and could expect several decades more of life. All spent here, as a victor. Feeling the strand of leather finally slip through the slot he had been trying to get it through he lifted it up so he could use his teeth to pull it the rest of the way through. Honestly a third hand could have been nice, but he felt he was becoming a bit of a burden on the Everdeen family lately and since it was before noon, hey Mitch was probably still asleep. How the man slept in his bed now that he didn't get drunk every night had Naruto honestly baffled. However he could understand why the man was drunk all the time before though. He would be too if it wasn't for Katniss. Not that she even asked him to stop. Just that whenever he began drinking too much she seemed to get so sad. Watery-eyed and pouting. It shouldn't have bothered him so much but every time he saw that look the drink suddenly felt more like acid and he couldn't stomach it anymore. He turned his attention back to the small craft in his hands. It distracted him a little bit which was nice. It would be better when he took it and his other gear and slipped into the woods today. It was time to get back into a familiar habit. Something familiar to try and get comfortable back home in District 12. So of course that meant he had to slip outside of District 12 as soon as possible. Some of my snares could still be in decent shape. He said to himself before huffing in annoyance as he was talking to himself again. Quickly gathering up everything he needed, Naruto made for the door of his mansion. Trying his best to ignore the echoing sound of his boots across the wooden floor. It was far too quiet here. Katniss watched from her window as Naruto took off at a light jog toward town. She could see the additional pack and knives he was carrying though. No doubt headed out toward the forest to try and return to his old routine. She felt a similar appeal toward hunting once again, even if she had no need of the game. She could always give it out at the hob. She took a moment to stretch before heading downstairs greeting her mother and sister as she went. They had adapted to the new house far more easily than Katniss or Naruto had. Prim was busy petting her monstrous pet cat while her mother was sewing something. Which she considered to be more of a habit than anything. If they had any clothes or things that were damaged it was easily replaced. There was little need for repairs. Not as the family of a victor. Are you heading into town? Her mother asked. Um, I was thinking of heading out. I saw Naruto headed that way. Katniss replied. Kareen sighed. She had never been happy with Katniss going out past the barrier of the district in the past, but it had been a necessity. Now though they had no need of game to survive. With a single look at her daughter though she bit her tongue and nodded. They didn't need the game but Katniss and her mother both knew that slipping through the fence was still a necessity for Katniss. Just in a different way. Gail was looking for you again. Prim commented quietly. Was he? Did he say why? Katniss asked. Cause he wants to talk to you. Same as every other time. The girl replied. Kareen sighed again, causing Katniss to shoot her a glance, but the woman had returned her focus to the task in her hands and clearly wanted no part of their conversation. I guess, I'll go talk to him. He has been trying to talk with me for a while, right? Yep. Prim said simply. You probably should check in on Naruto first. Don't you think so? Their mother chimed in. I know where he's going. I'll stop by and see if Gail is at home on my way. Then I'll probably spend the day with Naruto out. She refrained from saying where. She couldn't help but think that perhaps the victor houses were probably bugged. Then again that might be paranoia from the games. She had never seen the capital put forth videos of victors with hidden cameras outside of the games. Whatever you feel is right. Make sure to invite Naruto over for dinner. 
I hate to imagine what he considers a meal by his lonesome. Corrine said. Katniss nodded and headed out the door. She couldn't help but agree. Plus she preferred to have him nearby where she could see him. It didn't take long for her to reach the center of the town. The merchant section. It was pretty much the same as always, except now things looked a bit cheerier. Fresh paint was applied to some shops and even some houses. More people were out and about and free ration packets and other commodities were being handed out at a few kiosks with young men and women in bright white uniforms using lists to make sure different families didn't get more than their share. All a part of the reward for Naruto and Katniss's victory. Not all of the reward had been expected or welcome though. The clean white uniforms of the people handing out food were matched by more than double the amount of peacekeepers the district formerly had. Most were guarding the supplies delivered to District 12 to be handed out, but others stomped through town and into the other parts of the district in roving patrols. An unwelcome sight in what had once been the least monitored region of Paynham. A lot of the simple freedom the people had enjoyed with the neglect of the capital was gone now. So much so that the justice buildings, now plural, were being expanded again. Until they were properly renovated, temporary cells had been constructed just inside the central square of town. Nothing more than glorified cages but it showed how much more the capital was paying attention in 12 now. They were even enforcing the more mundane laws. No identification on your person when stopped by a peacekeeper? That's a day in a cell if not a fine that almost no one here could afford. Drunk in public? Three days. Theft? You'd be lucky to not get a public lashing. Still, they weren't doing anything more than actually enforcing the laws. There actually seemed less of the corrupt type of officers now. Too much oversight to take bribes or bully a shopkeeper into coughing up protection money. Silver linings existed in nearly every unhappy situation. Katniss still detested the situation. After all she just really wanted to be left alone, but being the victor she was the moment she stepped foot in town she picked up a couple of stalkers dressed in white. At least they kept enough of their distance to give her some privacy and only followed her while in the more densely populated part of the district. A show for any cameras that might catch sight of them, more than anything. Or maybe a reminder that the capital was very much paying attention to her. She couldn't be sure. As much as they gave her some space though, the people of the district had taken to doing it even more. They shot her looks, clearly wanting to at least greet her, but the sight of peacekeepers nearby had them quickly going about their day. Thankfully the officers today did the same as they always did and moved off onto some patrol once she made it to the edges of the seam. Despite the influx of food and supplies to District 12, the seam hadn't changed much. Sure the people were a bit better fed and their clothes were a bit cleaner and less worn out, they were still hungry and ragged though. A single victory wasn't enough to make that much of a difference. Katniss soon found herself on the familiar road she once used to make her way home. The Hawthorns didn't live far from where she had grown up which probably had something to do with why she and Gale had grown up so closely. That and the hunting. I should probably make more time for him. He probably thinks I forgot all about him with this mess. Katniss reprimanded herself while blowing out a sigh of frustration. There just always seemed to be something happening now, something always getting in the way of her meeting with anyone she had considered a friend. Though really she felt like she spent most of her days wandering around aimlessly or sitting with Naruto. Thinking about it made her feel a bit disgusted with herself. Pathetic and lazy, I need to get back to hunting more often. Something to do at least. She muttered passing by her old house and doing her best to ignore its existence as she continued down the road. A ways further and she came to the Hawthorns. It was a bit larger than the old Everdeen house but it also housed about double the amount of people as her house had. Gail hadn't ever complained. Well beyond mentioning when he needed to bag a new deer or the like to make sure his siblings or parents had enough to eat, Katniss didn't even reach the door before it swung open and Gail's mother stepped out with a basket of laundry bound for the clothesline. 
She saw the victor immediately and seemed to push on a smile that looked like it was an uncommon feature on her aging face. Hello, Katniss. She said pleasantly. Mrs. Hawthorne. Hello. Is Gail here? Katniss asked. A brief moment passed as Gail's mother seemed to think things over. She let out a small sigh and the smile on her face became a bit tighter. All of which Katniss wisely didn't comment on. He's gone to work. His shift won't end for a few hours still. She said. He's gone to work in the mines. Katniss muttered. He's eighteen now. Took up a job the moment he could. Of course. Tell him I stopped by please. Katniss said as she turned to leave and escape the stilted and awkward conversation. I will. Mrs. Hawthorne replied before stepping around her house and beginning to hang the laundry out to dry. Katniss wandered for a bit. Her feet trailing along the still familiar path toward the border fence for the district. It wasn't long until the fence came into sight and soon enough she found a place to slip through. As she did so, she couldn't help but spot the tiniest clues that Naruto had passed through before her. She hadn't let her skills rust after the arena, not that it had truly been so long since the games. Still, for some reason she felt the ingrained action of picking out the signs needed to track her fellow victor. It was easier now. Maybe because Naruto wasn't trying to hide his path so much or because she had simply become more attentive to such details after her time as a tribute. Either way, following Naruto's subtle path was easy enough for her and she soon found herself picking along a trail that moved from snare to snare. Most had long since been broken or set off but she noticed a couple had been considered salvageable by Naruto and he had repaired and set them once more. Missing the forest for the trees, Katniss. A voice called out from the side of the path causing her to jolt slightly and pull the small knife from her belt in a smooth motion. Whoa, easy. Sorry, I should have known better than to try and prank you like that. Naruto said as he held up his hands and stepped out from around the dense mesh of an evergreen and some other tree she thought was maybe an oak or maple. You should. She huffed out but still smiled faintly at seeing the thin grin on his lips. Well put the knife away. I'm not going to try anything on you, I swear. He said getting a roll of the eyes from her as she slipped the knife back into its place. A moment later he proved himself a liar as he reached out and caught her in his arms tightly before planting a soft kiss to her lips. Slowly they broke apart. I thought you wouldn't try anything. Eh, changed my mind. He replied as they both softly laughed and kissed again. Even after they broke apart and began to simply walk through the woods, the pair of them remained mostly silent. No real need to talk much. After all they were both quite content to enjoy one another's company and little else. She thought maybe stepping out here in the woods, just the two of them might be a bit difficult now. Instead it felt better. She could tell Naruto at least felt much better here than in the district, or worse yet in the Victor Village. They ventured through all of the old paths that they had once been regulars on. Not really hunting. Just going through the motions, enjoying the solace of one another's company until the day had shifted to afternoon and both of them felt how hungry they had become. Only then did they head back home to Katniss' house. Both victors knew something was amiss when Corrine met them at the door. She simply greeted them but her eyes seemed to be full of warning about, something. As they followed her into the house they realized what it was that clearly had her so ruffled. Within the door, really just behind Corrine and out of sight until they had all stepped inside, were two large men in uniforms that looked much like a peacekeeper. Though they weren't the usual white and instead were completely black with bright red lines and symbols to denote some sort of rank or unit perhaps. Corrine was clearly nervous with them around but led Naruto and Katniss past the men without pausing. They only stopped once they were in the living room. Several more people were gathered there. For more of the black uniformed officers as well as a woman in a crisp black office suit. She looked like she could have come from the capital with how healthy and clean she was, but her appearance was extremely utilitarian. A black set of office clothes, 
complete with tight skirt and high heels. Plain brown hair done up into an incredibly tight bun and not a trace of makeup on her incredibly plain and angular face. Ah, the victors themselves. We've all been waiting for you. She said while looking up toward Naruto and Katniss. There was a small amount of humor in her voice but her face hadn't the slightest bit of change from the stoic and expressionless look it had when they first entered. Naruto noticed the others sitting around the room after that. Katniss' sister, as well as Haymitch sat uncomfortably while surrounded by so many guards. Haymitch was also holding a wet washcloth to a swollen and bloodied lip. Who are you? Katniss demanded. I hardly think that matters. What matters is who I work for and what questions they wanted me to answer. Questions that you and Mr. Namikaze have the answers to. Please have a seat. If you cooperate then this will only take a moment. The woman said while motioning toward the two dining room chairs that have been dragged to the center of the room. If we don't cooperate? Naruto asked. It felt like a formality really. The woman simply looked toward one of the uniformed men and without a word he stepped forward and planted a painful strike against the back of Hamich's head. The older man took it with little more than a flinch and a glare. Naruto however stepped forward only to pause as two others in uniform stepped up beside the terrified Kareen and Primrose. Your cooperation really is in the best interest for everyone in the room. I simply need to ask you some very basic questions and record your answers and hopefully you will never see me again. As long as you both remain well behaved of course. The woman said, before once again motioning toward the chairs. Naruto and Katniss did as directed now. Clearly the capital woman knew exactly how to get results. No need to worry, this is all very routine and soon to be over. She said calmly. Routine? Haymitch asked only to lift his hands up like a surrender when the guard stepped toward him once again. Now, my first question. Where were both of you today? She asked. The pair of teens shared a glance before turning to look at the woman again. We just walked around with one another. Katniss replied. Forgive me if I wasn't clear. I did not ask what you were doing. I asked where you were. The woman said without any change in her flat tone. Just around the district. Naruto answered only to jerk his head to the side as a black gloved fist met the side of Hamich's face. Please do not lie to me, Mr. Namikaze. Others will suffer for it. The woman responded. He's telling the truth stop it. Katniss demanded as another blow landed on their mentor, this time causing Haymitch to slump slightly and nearly pitch forward out of his seat before righting himself and shooting a glare at the blank-faced guard despite the painful-looking blow to his face. Answer me truthfully or the next one to receive a blow will be Mrs. Everdeen. From there we will move on to Miss Everdeen before we start with something a little more permanent. The woman stated calmly, uncaring that she was talking of torture. We crossed the fence and went into the buffer forest. Katniss followed me. I crossed over first. Naruto said. Thank you. See, wasn't that easy? Stick to the truth from here on out and you will be fine. After all, you can't be sure which questions I already have answers to, can you? Naruto and Katniss simply glared at the woman silently. She was unbothered of course. Whoever she was, the capital woman was confident there was nothing that either of the victors could do to her. Instead of paying either of them any mind for their venomous looks, she opened a briefcase nearby and withdrew a pad and stylus. Now, let's truly get started. Have either of you had any contact with the families of any other tributes or victors not of your district since coming to reside here in the victor village? She asked. No. Naruto bit out. Miss Everdeen? The woman asked. How would we even manage to do that? She asked. Yes or no would be plenty for an answer. No. Katniss glared as she replied. The questions continued in the same vein from there on. 
Yes or no responses from Naruto and Katniss as the woman largely grilled them on everywhere they had been and everyone they had met since the end of the games. He couldn't be sure what Katniss or Haymitch were thinking but Naruto pretty quickly realized what was going on. He and Katniss seemed to have caused a bit more of a stir among the districts than they had realized. The capital was worried about something. Naruto was pretty sure the capital only ever worried about one thing. I see, thankfully we have reached our final question. The woman said. At least she had been honest. With Naruto and Katniss cooperating the interview, if it could be called that, lasted only a few minutes. Do you have a preference for the order in which you tour the other districts in the upcoming registration tour? The pair blinked. The last question seemed so out of place. All the others were grilling Naruto and Katniss about their usual activities, their paths during the day. None of which seemed to be an issue even when they broke the laws. They had admitted to poaching, crossing the border, even using the hob and black market of the district regularly. The woman had been unfazed by all of that information. More frighteningly she seemed to have expected or known all of that too. This last question seemed to have nothing to do with it though. I don't care. If we could avoid doing the tour altogether I think we would. Katniss replied. I feel the same way. Naruto agreed as the woman turned to look at him. She simply nodded before scribbling something onto her tablet and then methodically putting everything away. That concludes our interaction then. You won't be seeing me again. I wish you all the best. She said simply before standing and calmly striding out of the house with the six black guards following after in perfectly synchronized movements. The Everdeen family as well as the two blonde men in the room sat in silence for nearly five minutes after the capital workers left before Naruto finally stood up and walked to the window to see if they were truly gone. Seeing nothing out of the ordinary outside and no trace of the capital personnel he let out a sigh. What the hell was that? He asked. The group turned to Haymitch as one who was still nursing his aching face and head. Heh, pretty sure we just met an urban legend. The president's personal investigative team. You kids really managed to ruffle some feathers. I can't imagine what nonsense is happening out there if Snow is checking to make sure you two aren't trying to stoke up rebellion or something. Haymitch explained as he probed along his swollen cheek. Let me get you something cold for that. Kareen said as she and Prim rushed into the kitchen to get something to help ease the man's pain. Naruto winced as he looked at the man. Sorry, I should have just been straight up. She didn't care we were breaking rules anyway. Don't kid yourself. If they need to they'll use all of that information to hang you. Plus you didn't beat on me. Just the capital being the same as it always has been. Haymitch said. They're watching the entry to the woods now. They are watching the town, and they're probably watching the hob. Katniss said cutting to the chase. We knew they would be doing most of that. They know where we enter at, but not where we go when we are inside, I think. Naruto said. Can't be sure. I know the house isn't bugged though. Oddly enough. Haymitch replied just as Kareen and Prim returned with a bag of ice wrapped in a handkerchief to press to Haymitch's face. What? How do you know? Kareen asked in a small whisper, having evidently just realized that it was even a possibility. I have a way to check. Trust me. Did they question you before we got here? Is that why you had the busted lip? Katniss asked. Nah. They decided to pull me out of my kitchen while I was making a sandwich. No knocking, just busting in. Almost stabbed one with the butter knife I had. He clocked me pretty good for that. The group of former tributes all snorted at that while both Kareen and Prim looked uneasy at that thought. I think this is all good for us though. Her last question makes me think we all passed whatever test they were giving us. Otherwise we would probably be having an accident or something instead of planning for this tour in a few months. Haymitch said. I wish that made me feel better. Katniss said. It should. Hopefully it means a bit less presence by the boys in white. 
Don't tell me you haven't noticed them following you around in the city. Hard not to. Naruto chimed in. So less of that then? That would be kind of nice. Katniss agreed. Less but not none. Gotta get used to it kids. You pissed off the big man himself. You broke the game and both made it out. There's consequences for winning just like there are for losing, especially if you beat the capital too. Haymitch said before he stood up and let Kareen guide him to the kitchen. She had some salve for the busted lip that would help it out. Prim headed upstairs, not really wanting to be in the living room at the moment, which left Naruto and Katniss alone once again. The two of them released their own tired sighs as they both let the stressful experience wash over them and the reality of living as victors and the only ones to have effectively beaten the system settled in. It'll never stop, huh? They'll always be worried we're trying to stir something up. Even you just doing the right thing and donating to the other districts probably looks suspicious to Snow. Katniss said worriedly. Yeah. But we've dealt with worse than this. We'll be fine. He said as he pulled her close once again. I know. Just, I feel like something worse is happening and we are going to get stuck in it or something. Even though we already did our part, just like they wanted. Katniss complained into his neck. Naruto nodded but kept his thoughts to himself. After all they hadn't done just as the capital and president wanted had they. If they had, at the very least one of them would be dead. He had been making a point of defying Snow for a while now, it just seemed like Snow was showing them all that there was a limit. It didn't really make Naruto feel like he should stop. He wanted to push further but not yet. Not when the others would be catching a beating for his actions like Haymitch had today. He just needed a proper opportunity to do something. It would come eventually. He felt it in his bones.